It is OSD time, the best damn day of the week. Thank you for tuning in to the original OG Sneaker Talk Show. This is episode 270, The Soul Doctor's Return. Yes, we are in the building. Hopefully you're ready to rock out with us. My name is G. Wells, along with the entire OSD crew, coming to you live and direct from the World Wide Web, which is the world headquarters of Obsessive Sneaker Disorder, The Soul Doctor. So, are you ready for your weekly prescription, your weekly doses of sneaker debauchery. You know how we get down. Man, we got a great show in store for you. If you missed episode 269, don't worry. Last Thursday, that was a special show. That was the launch, the unveiling, the unveiling of the Walk Good brands and the finalists from Penn Soul Feature of Footwear Design that designed their way to Las Vegas, baby. But always know that what happens in Vegas does stay in Vegas, but in this instance, there is going to be a winner there will be someone that will take the big old belt and take their career to the next level. But this is episode 270. We got a great show in store for you. Hopefully you're walking good, talking good, and more so ready to rock out with us as we do each and every week. If you want to make sure you stay up to tune, up to date with OSD, make sure you follow OSD Live for the one and only Mr. Paper Chase, the professor himself. Yours truly at Wells OSD, And, of course, Mr. Ridiculous himself, RDL. RDQ, L-U-S, Ridiculous Creative, is in the building. Let's go straight to Brooklyn, USA first. Mr. Paper, what is the good word? What's the good word? What's the good word? How what is you? good, Disorderlies? We are boom. back. Episode number 270. Boom, boom, boom. The Soul Doctors return. And again, as my brother D. Wells has stated, if you were not able to catch up on the previous four episodes where we were actually putting you on the inside, yes. letting you look inside what's going on with the making of the Walk Good brand. That would be episodes number 266, 267, 268, and 269. Um, you need to watch all four of those episodes to see what culminated with last week being two finalists representing the Walk Good brand who will be going to Las Vegas and presenting those two groundbreaking designs at the platform Future of Footwear Ceremony, representing us. So again, congratulations to uh, Thomas Lee and to Zia Ahmad, who uh, were pencil students this past cycle, and they will be going to Vegas along with a few others to present their designs on our behalf. So those of you who voted through Mesha One, those of our judges, thank you immensely. And just to any and everybody who is supporting and sharing their comments and well wishes and excitement about what we've been trying to build, um, we appreciate that. So we're back with the normal dose of sneaker debauchery. We got a late pass for a few members of the crew today, but they'll be in in a minute. And we're just going to do what we need to do until they arrive. But um, in another effort to show that we are back to what we normally do, um, before we do that, we need to get over to the O.N.E. with the homie Ridiculous, Ridiculous Creative. What is good, homie? How are you today? What's up, what's up? We're doing all right. Look at the Slaughterlies out there. In, uh, Can't in, hear you. In, Unmute yourself. Uh-oh, I'm uh, here. No, he's live and direct. Good? Good? We're good. We're okay. Good. Go for it. Here. All right. Cool, cool, cool. Shouts out to all the Disorderlies out there in virtual land. Mm -hmm. Welcome back. Soul Doctor's back in the place. Good to be back with the crew. We're, we're a little skeleton right now, but they know we're going to get it in. Oh, yeah. man. Of we're going to do what I do. <laughs> you know how um, we do. Keep it rolling. So, so sir, um, if it's not too much to ask before we get going with our usual course of business and de debauchery, um, what I call B&D, business and debauchery. That's going to be a new term <laughs> like for it. B&D. Like yeah, we're going with B&D. Um, how about you tell everybody about that come up? Ooh, oh, yes. Oh, yeah, uh, you just you go ahead. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. You want, you, you, want, you, want, you want that I should go run, get it real quick? Or Listen, you can do real time that's for the all, just all these around the world, or you can just pull up your Instagram feed. Let's, uh, you know what? Real time. They deserve real time. Give okay. Me, me 10 seconds. You, you okay. go for it. You go for it. You're pretty fast. I'm telling you, man, while he's over getting that sneaker, that talk about a come up? Yeah. I was like, really? Yeah, That's how he's getting down. I was like, man. Yeah, they can't be too far away. He just no, got... no, exactly, exactly. See, he's look got. Look at that. Look at that. Your boy is back. Yeah, your boy is back. Okay, so 
You know how we do with the come up. You know, there's there's the bag. Uh huh. And uh, mm. normally the come up has to be a substantial, substantial uh, markdown. Yes, yes, yes. The markdown has to be great, and but but the quality of the markdown needs to be high. The, yes. You know the the disparity between the price and what it should have been needs to be substantial. Um, yes. We have talked on the show before about this particular shoe. Um, funny thing is, we we talked about the name of the special edition of this shoe as somewhat of a misnomer because the man it was named after was a uh, track coach specifically and this was a trainer but when the price drops to 29.99 on the hash wall you don't beef too much about the Bill Bowerman air trainer one yeah wow it's quality uh, I can't. I cannot front. It is full on quality. I've already had them on foot. We talking, you know, me metallic uh, uh, aglets on the end of the mm -hmm. laces, uh, metallic accents everywhere. The the stripe pattern representing the earlier Nike boxes when uh, Nike Air was getting popular. You know, everyone knows about the great orange, the gray and orange boxes. Um, it's a quality shoe, dress shoe leather. All the way around. Hmm. So, uh, yeah, uh, uh, as we like to do, we will show said receipt. I think uh, after everything was official, oh. we're looking at, yeah. <laughs> so it's all good. Mm -hmm. And that, my disorderlies, is how we come up. That is. That's yeah. a That's mega major. come up. Hey, like the the thing, the first thing to play in my head is uh, D's mantra: If you are patient, <laughs> you yeah. will get everything you want. It's you true. Buy, it's buy true. It is so, true. And, and, and you know what was funny to me, and I posted it as soon as I as soon as I got them. There's a difference between copying and mm. hunting. I like to hunt. Break I it like down. I like to get out there. I like to. Beat the street, dig in the dirt, get your hands dirty, you know, paper cuts from boxes on hash walls, uh, you know, going going deep to dusty little spots in the back. Um, just copying something. I, I leave that to the, to, to the newbies. I leave that to the status hunters. I leave that to those who are going after it for a different reason. But if you say that you are all about the hunt, then there, there needs to be a modicum of patience and 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 a little bit of uh, Sherlock Holmes, you know, to put on the put on the floppy hat and and go digging in the dirt, you know, get the get the magnifying glass out and actually go searching for something. Yep, do it. That's the that, that was a that was a real fun cop. Uh, lots of hunting, lots of lots of digging this weekend when I was out of town. Um, I love doing that. It's so funny. My whole family understands that if I'm traveling. We gotta find outlets and we gotta find little 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 known spots because Steve wants to hunt for a couple hours. Hmm. Yeah. So yeah, good come up, good come I, up. I'm I'm trying to find me one to beat that. Man, uh, that's gonna be uh, hard. That's gonna be very Jesse, hard. Our brother Jesse got a good one today too for twenty twenty one bucks. He got that uh, that new uh, retro remake that they're doing of that that sunset pack. He got the really? uh, yeah, he got right, the Jesse, Air ninety twenty one dollars yeah, seventy nine cents yeah twenty one seventy nine he got the sunset version of the updated uh, ninety seven oh that's right that's right yeah, yeah that was mean that was mean mm. I mean speaking of come up somewhere I'm rocking another one from Adidas I didn't post this one I, it, it was a while ago but that one was twenty bucks at the Adidas outlet is the Addy Pure going yeah. for about uh, ninety. I ended up getting that one for twenty. Nice little walk around joint. Yeah, mm. that that shoe didn't do well in New York either. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it would have. Yeah, <laughs> the attitude is definitely an Oregonian. You you you're actually making me want to uh, pull up an unofficial, uh, uh unofficial WTF from oh, Instagram right now. Yes. Ooh, yes, do it. I love an early unofficial. Okay, so here we go. Pull up on the screen, and then I'm going to share this bad boy. Those of you who have been to my Instagram, you've already seen it. But um, here we go. 
your boy Shaq <laughs> is running around <clears throat> with oh Reebok, yeah with the Shaq attacks and Shaq gnosis. Meanwhile, his company is putting out this kind of madness. Mm. The son of son of <laughs> the illegitimate of son that. of my. But what 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 is that phrase they say? Yeah, um, the bastard child my, of my Steve father's. Life. My father's brother is my, my my father's brother is my cousin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is definitely a Luke. I'm your father, Woo! man. But paper, we gotta. I want you know that is definitely a WTF sneaker because what is that? Is that a mashup of? Um, let's see now. I see a a little bit of the nine. I see this physique. I see son a of Mars. son of Mars. I see a it's little bit of the. What did you say, Flower? Oh, a, a little bit of diamond turf. With yeah. The well, see, with the and, and the thing, the thing that I'm, I'm like, that's like cheating off for the kid who cheated because the no, they, like son of Mars is already a mashup. Right. Exactly. They, they, just, they just got all the wrong answers by cheating off for the kid who got all the answers wrong. Yeah, <laughs> right. Man. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So yeah. So that's the unofficial WTF tonight. The real WTF tonight. Is going to be insane. Yeah. Mm. I want to go back real quickly. I just want to step back real quickly and there show it folks is. There what it is. our homie, you know, Jesse, you know, from Portland came up on. Yes, these are original. These are crazy. This is the yeah. Nike, you know, these came from the hash wall. Oh, yeah. So these are hey, Air hey. Max 97s. You know, D D D teach the people about the name. Where, where, what is the hash wall, sir? The hash wall, I mean, the hash wall is the, is the wall that is usually way, way, way in the back where they usually cut the top of the boxes off and just basically throw the sneakers in the box and stack them by size. So you That's start with right. the smallest size, maybe a men's size 7, and work your way all the way around so you get up to size 15, 16, all or brands. larger. What's the name all of that wall again? I never knew the, that. The hash, the hash wall. wall. And, and okay. all the brands do it. Adidas, oh. Nike, mm -hmm. New Balance, they all have a hash wall. So these bad boys, these you know, these Air Max 97s, which some people will say, well, where does the inspiration come from? And this is all part of a particular pack. Sunset. Yeah, actually, sunset, sunset pack that we covered not too long ago. Yes. And, if I, and someone help me out. How many seekers were there? As it part was of all of it was all of their runners. Um, okay. It was the 90, 91, Air Max 1, 97, 95. It was all of their classic yearly okay. runners. Um, so all the numbers we know, uh, Air Max 1, I'll repeat, Air Max 1, 90, 91. Um, they did a engineered 95. mesh. They did, they did an engineered mesh version of the Air Max 180, mm -hmm. the 95, the yeah. 97. Yeah. Um. And the 2000. Uh, was it the 2013? Was it was in that also one of the most mm, current ones? Possibly. Mm -hmm. Can't um, remember, but I think so. Yeah. And so it was uh, engineered mesh versions. Like for instance, this 97 is actually slightly different than the original 97. So it was all engineered mesh versions or slightly different versions of the shoe. And that colorway, they they call it the Sunset Pack now. But not many remember Nike back in the day was very, very famous in the in the Nike International and Track and Field world for a colorway that they used to call flames. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so there wow. was Nike, there were Nike spikes with that faded uh, red to yellow colorway, and they were the Nike. If you had the flames, you knew you were hot. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Absolutely, that was like money in the bank. It was, it was. Man. Yeah, if you had the flames, you were doing something special on the track. So we're talking, talk about a come up, twenty one ninety seven. Twenty one ninety seven for for. It's not even a, six months old. Exactly. Nope. It, it's, it's still not even on, free. It's, it's still at retailers for full price. Yes. Right. Yep. Still is. That's hot. So yeah, that's that's a definite come up. Like I said, the 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 come up is official when the price. <laughs> uh, the retail price and the type of shoe it is is so far away from what you actually paid. Mm, he word. just about got that shoe for cost. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Maybe. Yeah, that's, that's pretty dumb. That's a little cheaper cost. Yeah, yeah, with, 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 the, with the mesh and the air bubble and everything, you, you just mm. might have gotten that one, Jesse. I'm telling you. Word. What's up, flower, flower, flower? What's the good word? How are you? 
100 miles and running. That's how we do it. <laughs> All right. Tell him, tell him, tell him. And uh, Mr. SFK, what's up, sir? You look tired. Yeah, man. What's the good word? Hey. Been, been working, working out, trying uh -huh. to get buff, you know. Uh oh. All Got right. The, it's, it's beer season, so my beer. I was, was going to say. Is it cold down in oh, the man. Oh, man. I, I usually grow my beard out in the summer to get ready for the winter. So okay. uh -oh. whenever you see the beard, it's, it's about it's to, about it's to jump off into, in the winter. So it's looking, it's looking very Old Spice is looking very manly. Oh, man. Everybody think everybody think I dye my beard. That's just the way my hair grows. That's nice. it. It's, it's dark. I ain't got it's no not, hair on my head, so it's got to grow somewhere. It's not, it's not that spray stuff? <laughs> no, 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 G, no GLH, hey. no gain, no nothing like that. Hey, hey that's, not, that's not the stuff Carlos Boozer used to try to make it No black water tape ups here, man. This is strictly uh, you know, natural. Oh, man. man. This is everything that just brought out my face. That was it. There you oh, go. Man. Well, it's a work of art. I'm looking forward to seeing it at Cleveland's Got Soul for Beard Wars. Ooh. Man. Hey, I, I don't know. I don't know if I can compete with those dudes. Those dudes are serious. Jose they, and K Dog is gonna be getting down at Beard Wars for CGS Four, but that that we'll we'll get into in a, in a later show. But, yeah, I'm gonna need, um, need about another three or four months to grow my beard out to compete with those dudes. Yeah, you need some hipster sauce to get them kind of beards, boy. <laughs> Ooh. We, we we let the little brother in past his bedtime this time, so uh -oh. Ben Berry's in the oh, house. Ben Berry's in the building. Oh, uh, set him, him loose. Cut him loose. He had he had a, he had me cracking up last time. Get him exactly. Up What's right up, up, sir? Oh, we can't unmute. hear. Oh, unmute. Up at top. Unmute, little brother. There you go. You see there it. Go. There you go. Money shot. Here you go. Yeah. There you go. There it is. I'm going to get mine up, too. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, I don't know, man. You got a long uh, ways to go. I do. I do. You're right. What's going on, little brother? brother? Not much, man. I wish I was in New York right now for that G-Shock party, though. Oh, that's all right. It's just a plastic watch. Yeah, you're right. But I think... Well, I'm sorry? It's just a plastic watch. Don't worry. You're right. Networking, networking. You can do that anytime. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I got you. I got a couple years. So we have Quab and Flower. You have not heard our new term for what we're going to be doing when we get down in here. We got B and D. Yep. So we got to discuss business and debauchery. That's how we do oh, okay. it. Okay. That was... <laughs> B and D. Oh. Into that. I, was thinking, I was thinking busted and disgusted. Huh. Well, we can use, we can use that wherever, the, wherever the topic, the show topic fits. So yes, I'm glad hmm. your creative license has allowed you to go go take it to another level already. So we have to do business first. Wait, wait, wait. First, what has everybody got on sneaker wise? I'm just oh. kidding. I already show, but I, I'll reshow. Uh, I seen the trainer ones. I'm kind of mad because they got the stripes from the floor with the gold trim. I know which ones you're talking about. It's the one with the gold stitching. Yep, yep, that's the one. Damn. That, that was that bad. was that was the come up. But uh, oh. tonight I'm just rocking the Ada Pures, uh, resting the feet because uh, earlier I was in my uh, my sling my spring blades. Ooh, spring blades. How are they? How are they? Uh, actually good. I I tested them. I've, I've put them through about three hard workouts and. Seven hours at Six Flags, <laughs> and so uh, they they are not a gimmick. They are for real. Um, it, but like with anything, it just takes a little bit to get them starting to work. And now that they're they're loosening up and had some time to to, to work in and warm up, uh, the the workout I had today and it was really really nice. It's uh it's surprising. Nice boost sole, boost mid sole or not? Or... Uh no, the the no. uh it's a it's a toss up. I have both pair. I have boost and then I have the actual the blade mid sole is what they're built on. Okay. And um the boost is just the foam, no? Yeah, the boost is just the foam. Uh, so the boost is more closely related to if you had to compare, the boost is closer to uh lunar Nike's the 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 Nike lunar stuff. It's a little more responsive. Um. In, but there's a cushioning aspect 
the spring blades are all about immediate response, okay. and so there's there's no sync to them. It's more of a very very uh, quick response to the ground and the push back. Okay. Um, so it's loading the spring and then the toe off. You get everything back. But uh, surprisingly, what I've noticed is my foot was a little bit sore getting used to it because the segmented sole is maximum flexibility. So it's almost like you're running barefoot, even mm. though it's a lot of shoe. Yeah, so give yourself nice. some time if you get a pair. It, it, it operates just like the Nike Free, mm. but with a lot more give back. And so my left foot did get a little bit sore because I was going extra hard in them, and it's because the entire shoe is flexible. Okay. What else everybody got before we get to stocks? Because I know that's actually what I'm curious about. I got something to say about that. Oh, yeah, Addy Pure. There we go. Addy Pure. All right, Miss Flower. What's on the feet? <laughs> Ladies, come on. I you have your, uh, You have your bunny oh, slippers she got on them now? Shoes. She got them, she got them the flip bunnies. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Here we go. Bad time, bad time here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Ah, uh, okay. Oh, see? Okay. Ooh. I see you. Hurting them. That's house shoes. Ooh. Leave it right there, Flower. That's hurting them. Man. With 360 bottom. I'm telling you. One time only, eight With times. With the fatty. Mmm. <laughs> and I got these for like $30. Really? Oh, man, we pulling out pickups. Man, y'all doing good. There's some random stuff, but these, random. you know, I had them since they came out, but it was just one of those things that was just, I didn't even know they came in my size. I saw them, and I was like, oh, let me get those, and mm -hmm. they Y'all doing All good. All right, Miss, Miss A the Great from, from, from Queen. Howdy. Howdy. Come on. No howdy, chicken tonight. Howdy. No. <laughs> hey, I saw I saw your feet earlier though. There was something good on there. Uh -oh. Oh, yeah. oh yeah, I have food. I have food on my feet. Hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I had pretzels on my jaw today, mm -hmm. and I spent twenty dollars on these. Put those back up, eh? Wow. <laughs> That's gonna become them. a daily thing, a, a weekly thing. Everybody has to show what they got. Man. Food, food porn. Food Keep porn. Food all right, all right. Mr. Ben, come on now. What, what yeah, do you have you on your do? feet? What you got what, on your feet, sir? What I do? What's on your feet? Uh, man, all right, so I had something to do today where you can't really wear sneakers all the time. Uh-huh. Leather Janowski. Leather yeah. Janowski, nice. nice. Okay. It's leather. It's not it's leather. Leather. It's leather. <laughs> leather. There you go. Yeah, I changed shoes like eight times a day. That's what I had on earlier. Wow. Okay. We thought you, Ben. We thought you had on pajama bottles with the footies in them. Nah, man. What happened was I was playing ball in them, and then I cut straight through them. He broke them. Broke them. He, he came balling. Oh, and what happened man. was I got too tall, so I had to cut the feet off. <laughs> you know what I mean? SFK, what do you? What did you uh, have on your feet today? Let's let's let the people know. The king, the crown is heavy. Black, black six-inch Timbs. That's it. Every day, every day. Good staple. Can't go That's wrong it. with those. Can't go black wrong. Six-inch Timberlands. There you go. Wow. There you go. He was Miss, stomping. He was stomping, exactly. That, 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 beard, it. that beard is affecting the choice. Ooh, killer. <laughs> Nah, man, that's that's called a paycheck. That's what it is. <laughs> that's called a paycheck. If you really want to give your feet a workout, try doing work uh, working in those for nine hours. Yeah, that's true. Indeed, that's true. true. There you go. There, there go, Mister. Come up right there. All right, Mister Jesse's in the thought. building. What's what up, a, sir? What a, what a black thought. You gotta move forward. There we go. Now we go. Oh, damn, the beard what up, is in what full up, effect Delph? too. Philadelphia Half Life. Yes, yeah, sir. Yes, sir. What's up, man? <laughs> What's, what up, up, crew? what's up, what's up, what's up? What do you have on your feet? Uh-oh. Here we go. Uh-oh. It got dangerous because Sean just reached down. Uh-oh. I just took them off, you know. I just don't, took them off. They don't okay. once you get in the crib. Oh, 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 I know yeah. Yeah. I knew he was doing it. $29.79, I hate you. Man. You want to hear the really, really bad part about it? What's and that? I'm you sure can't most play. of you under you, you guys will understand this when I say this, but I don't want to publicize this too much. But um, your boy is on the list. So the oh. price is more than that. <laughs> Jesse, did you get my email? 
I did, man. Uh, sorry to get back to you right away, but I will get back to you shortly. But yeah, All good. I'm down. I'm All down. good. All right. All right, Professor, come on now. What what did you wear on your feet today? Come on, tell me why I got to be come mad on at you, My go-tos. I love them. Uh -huh. I love the death. Solo uh, soft. Uh, gotta love the solo soft mocks. All right. Mm. Plain Mark. black. Those are uber comfortable. Ooh, yes, they, they are. are. They're like sex on your feet. Yeah, they're, 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 they're far better than the Roche. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Now, what's what's the difference between? G give give me the breakdown, cause I don't have roches. I don't deal with the, the solar yet. soft mocks are made out of lunar. The roches okay. aren't. Okay. The roches okay. have a lunar lunar um footbed inside, but mm. um the the sole is not lunar. These the, are just straight lunar under yeah. your. And the construction of the mock. Actually, is more like a cup sole, so it drops your foot below the wall, yep. so that so that you have more a little more structure laterally. Whereas ah. the, the the roast, you are sitting on top of the pad. That's all. Yeah. You literally you yep. literally forget that you're wearing shoes when you put those on, yep. because the cush the cush is wide enough. You know, D right in the middle of the foot there where your arch falls when you walk. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, right that there. That shoe is made wide enough where you don't really think about how you're walking or what you're walking on. It's just comfortable. Yeah. Mm. Which is actually idea. kind of dangerous. I have to catch myself sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Southern Mark is good. Yeah, it's it's great. I, you can keep all that floral shit, though. You give a fuck about all that. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. Now nah, you keep all that Hawaiian Sophie bullshit. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I ain't rocking with that. I'll take um, the plain colors of the Solar Soft Moccasin or the Quick Strike You're the Snake ones that I have all day. Hmm. Not I ain't gonna lie, I kind of I kind of like them Nantucket colors, although summer is coming to an end. Get yeah, I'm not, I'm not doing greens, that. Well, you understand, reds. you gotta do whatever you can to brighten up the OE, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> wow. That's right. Man. <laughs> Man, all right. So we we're doing the debauchery before we're doing the business, but it's okay. We're gonna get right to it. We need to get into the stocks. We haven't done stocks for a month, even though you can catch them every day after 4 p.m. as I post them on Twitter, on Facebook, and on Pinterest and wherever other network. Actually, on Google Plus also. So let's talk about how the stocks finish in the end of today's trading. A lot of stocks were down today which you'll see now when I start with Nike, finishing at $65.63 a share, down $0.91. Cents. Skechers, mm. at $27.97, down $0.24 cents a share. VF Corporation, parent company for Vans, North Face, etc. They finished at $198.31 a share, down $2.75 a share. Time to um, die. They've been trending downwards lately since they've been kind of hot. Um, Under Armour, who uh, recently finished put it put out that uh, Gridiron Trainer, sixty nine dollars and fifty cents a share, down fifty four cents. Deckers Outdoor, parent company for Uggs, finished still at a strong fifty seven and nine fifty seven dollars and ninety six cents a share, down thirty eight cents. They've been trending kind of. Up and down, but still overall kind of steady. Foot Locker Incorporated finished at $35.84 a share. They're one of the only stocks up today at $0.21 cents a share up. Adidas AG finished at $57.23, down $0.78. Cents. Puma AG finished at €223 Euros per share, up 135 and they're trending upwards a lot. Wow. And eBay finished at $53.01 a share, down $0.69. Cents. Mm -hmm. so that is how we finish today's trading. And once again, you can make sure you get wind of that every day after 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time as I post on Facebook, on Twitter, on Google+, uh, and on Pinterest. So any reactions to that? For my money, while Adidas is down, I would buy and sell in January. 
If you buy and sell, okay. Out before the you can't energy. buy it either if they're not on our market. I mean, I like money, so you figure you buy 50 shares now while it's down. You sell it in January and everything's back. Right? I'm sorry? They're on the OTC, OTC market. Oh, yeah, they're not? not? I'm sorry, pull the pull the thing back up? I'm sorry, I didn't even see that. OTC market. Um, I'll send you a link so that you can click on it and see which market exactly they're on. It won't show up too big on the screen. I just really I mean, put it I up. Enlarge it when you had it up, yeah. I just pull it up more for um, illustration purposes, but um, yeah, they're not on the U.S. market. Well, back to what I was saying. I, I like what Adidas is gonna do for the rest of the year. Hmm. I do like that. That sounds like a man who's seen some things. <laughs> we can only live off Run DMC so long, you know what I mean? Uh, and I still don't want to. They actually that. put a lot of money behind their current campaign for One DMC with yeah. um. I forget his name. DMC? No, it's uh they have they have another superstar coming out uh, with yeah. DMC on the tongue. But there's also a D a DJ that's being uh, put on. And I want to say that they're gonna have it's a concert, but I don't want to say without being wrong. It's A Track, I believe. Oh really? Yeah, I Do believe it's A Track. Okay. Yeah. That that sounds right. That sounds right. I'm not familiar with them, but that sounds about right. They, I think they name dropped him in that in that recent commercial. It's hidden in the lyrics, but they, uh, I think they dropped a track real quick, like. Okay. Wow, okay. Well, from what I've heard, there's gonna be a concert. Now I don't know how that's gonna go off very well. Replacing Jam Master J. Yeah, no. I, I, I'd say I say here's here's what I say about that. Uh, in tribute. Most people are more understanding. He hasn't been replaced. Uh, rest in peace. The, the the man is not with us anymore. So they did what they had to. It would be, I know it's tough. It's a tough call. But in tribute, I think people are going to be more uh, able to live with it than if it were a breakup. You know what I mean? Okay. Mm. Uh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. It's been a while since the two of them have been on stage together. So if they pull that off, it's going to be a nice, mm. nice little something. Yeah. But. Yeah. No, they've, been doing some, they've, been doing, they've been doing some shows. They actually recently just did um a couple of, I want to say about a month and a half ago, they were in Europe with Tribe. Really? I remember yeah. Tribe did overseas. Wow. I didn't know so, that. So Run DMC actually was on the bill with Tribe at one of the dates overseas they did a few weeks ago. So, mm -hmm. And considering there is no more Run Athletics, um, mm. timing is only right. Thankfully. Have you seen the Superstar, Sean? I have seen it, and um, I mean, I get it, but you should have just killed it two years ago. That shoe was it. That's one of the greatest shoes, period, of all time. Why keep they going to the well? Because we're grabbing it. for straws. They should have killed it after DMC jumped ship and went to Lacoste Sportif. Oh, man. This, guy, <laughs> this guy's been on, like, three different <clears throat> sneaker labels. Yeah. He's had, he's had a, I don't even know if it was a Jordan endorsement or what. But he's been picture blocking Jordans. He got a check from the Cop Sportif, and he's still banking off of Adidas. This guy is just going out for a check. That's it. But you know what? Res re respectively speaking, Quab, and that all that is true. He'll always have history with Adidas. He'll I always take a life on deals. He'll he always talk like a little baby. Yeah, that's because he had a, a issue with his voice. Stop that. <laughs> he talk like he talk like a little baby. If you ever hear this dude talk, just regular, not rapping, he talk like a baby. I'm just saying. so did so did the DOC, and he ain't rapping no more, right? And he had oh, a no, accident too. DOC, I, I I ain't fucking with him. I, fuck with <laughs> I ain't fucking with DOC. No. I'm good. He said, "No, I'm good. I'm good. I'm not good." Mm -mm. Well, yeah, I think Adidas has went to the well run, one, one too many times with the Run DMC thing. Now, if you were going to put that shoe out with the no laces, then you should have did that before you did the 1986 thing, and then the 1986 thing should have been it. It's for people like me that didn't get the 1986 pair. There you, you go. You were supposed to have the 1986 pair. There you go. Yo, I have a you lot. Can't, of you, you'll never to. be able to get an 86 pair. You just need to rock a clean pair of shell toes, and you'll get a little credibility. No, nah, I like the, man, I like the 3 M. I like the little dookie rope thing on the on yeah, the, the, uh, the you, you know what I mean. Like I, I like stuff it's like that. It's clean, white, and any color you want, and you'll be okay. Ben, how old were you in 1986? In 1986, I was negative. <laughs> 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 oh, man. You want me to do? I'm sorry. Man. Uh, 
<laughs> man, oh, man, I'm, he says I'm sorry. No, don't apologize for you. It's all good. It's exactly. say, don't be saying sorry to nobody for nothing. Yeah, don't yeah. apologize. Man. Do not apologize. All right, so what are we going, D? We're going to go talk about the Sneakerhead Confessions. All right. Uh, to donate 40-plus pairs of kicks. Oh, I like this. I like this. I was actually, um, you know, when I saw saw this pop up, I <clears throat> okay. August, you know, August 23rd, 2013, Sneakerhead Confessions will be donating 40 plus pairs of sneakers and apparel. And this is all going down in uh, Marietta, Georgia. No, I'm sorry, Marietta, California. Uh, San Diego, uh, Boys and Girls Club, yep. Yeah, so they're going to be donating, you know, to help the Boys and Girls Clubs of Greater San Diego. Basically, if you, you know, have questions or you want to, you know, send, uh, you know, some sneakers to be donated, hit them up. Their website, but more importantly, Sneakerhead Confessions at AOL.com. You know, who said? You know, who's to say that you know sneakerheads can't actually reach out, help one another? You know, help boys and girls, especially this time of the year. You know, with back to school around the corner, this is perfect timing. You know, there's always kids that need. You know, moms, dads, aunts, uncles, grandparents who sometimes can't go out and afford the sneakers that you know uh, John Sue. You know. Our star wants to wear, and here's an opportunity for you as a sneakerhead, sneaker aficionado, sneaker connoisseur, you know, to basically, you know, put your soul where your mouth is, and uh, and help, you know, a young woman or a young man out. So, um, you know, basically, 4 p.m. It's going down August 23rd in yep. good old San Diego. Again, email them at sneakerheadconfessions at aol dot com. So. Now, I like what it says here, D, where it says, you know, HSC, Sneakerhead Conventions, has been consistent in their community work by donating to foster homes and doing charity work. Yep. Attempting to give sneakerheads a better image, they will continue their good karma by giving sneakers, snapbacks, and T-shirts to the California Youth site on August 23rd. Yep. They obviously... I would like to are, officially... Start a campaign against using the word sneakerhead. I don't know what to replace it with, but yeah, I was gonna say what what is the because that's that's a debate that even I do this too. week uh, I I was having with some uh, you know some young adults here in Worcester about the word sneakerhead and they're like yeah I'm a sneakerhead and I was like so what does that mean you know so Jesse if you were gonna replace it what's the what's the way we could say someone that loves sneakers? I mean, don't I, 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 don't, I don't I don't know. Don't it's say hard because it's it's you know even for people on this crew and as I think about trying to how I want to be represented or how I represent when I'm out in the world, I, I don't you know you grow up and you don't necessarily want it to be all about the shoes. Yeah, there's a love there, but there's such a story behind everything that we do with our shoes. I mean, shoes will never be secondary, but it's a part of us. It's not the thing and so I feel like there's so many kids out there now just looking for something to identify with so they're like word let me throw the sneakerhead title on there and it's just mm. you gotta it, it's, it's gotta be more than that it's gotta be more than that so well, when I figure with, out what it is I'll let you know but it's even it's within the realm of just you know being a footwear lover in general once we start talking materials construction style fashion it, it's not just about the sneakers True. And most of most and most of us know far more than just sneakers. I like the fact that you know. Shout out again to Nick Engel and Dex and those guys from Complex for uh, featuring me in that piece. But that piece that it's they had, for, they had forty of us, you know, speak about our opinions on what's going on in the state of sneakers, which was an awesome week. That was a great week by them. Mm. I like that they threw that question in. What do you think when you hear the word sneakerhead? And my, my answer was, the minute I hear it, I think about how much I hate that term and I want to do away with it. Mm. That was my answer. It's derogatory. You know, that you was know my what? answer to that question. To play devil's advocate, I like it. It helps identify a certain, <laughs> like the passing of the guard, if you want to say. Like, there's there was this culture and there was this people that was a part of this. Mm -hmm. And then now there are sneakerheads who saw that and built from that, and that's a whole different section, you know. If that makes sense, like I, I like it. it. It makes it easy to identify who's who. Nah, it doesn't make it's so it's much. More, it's so much it's, more. It's so much more than the shoes, though. It's it's the, your love for the shoes and what it's brought to you 
is what you want to try to focus on, and bringing those things into words is difficult. Look at the people right now we're on this call with, going to functions and talking and having a good time, uh, people noticing the colors, um, people being excited about to see your shoe. There's, there, you, you do more with your love for the kicks than just being a sneakerhead. What, I'd what be, is that? I'd be, I'd, you be what I'm saying? To, I'd be willing to give you uh, credit for the devil's advocate. Explain to me who the other side is. Who is it distinguishing from? All right, I don't want to just say the person with a snapback and camel shorts and hot top of these You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to... <laughs> speak on it, young, and speak on it! <laughs> but that's pretty much what it is. Like, I really liked Gary Payton when I was younger. Like, I, like, that, that's what I, that's who I want to play like. If I could talk to make myself better, then that's what I'll do. But, but I feel like sports. that, I'm sorry? That's exactly why you're not a sneakerhead, because you were relating your love to sports, how you ball in your shoes. But the sneakerheads so don't. So it makes it that much easier to distinguish, like, it may, I say keep the sneakerhead name, just come up with a different one. Come up with different subsets. Hmm. I, you're, getting away from, you're getting away I from your be, original argument now. Nah, I'm saying, I said I like the name. Keep it. It's for them. Not for me. I might sweep somebody's leg out and hit him with a two-piece. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. Okay, I see, I, I see what you're saying. It's a, it's, a, it's a notable and necessary category within what we love. Mm. You know, it, it, so I hear what you're saying. I, that argument I do agree with. It's there for a specific reason. It might not be for you. It might not be for us. But it is a categorizable section of people who truly are only about that, the cop, you know, I'm out copping, I'm the in line, generation. I got the freshest. Yeah, I hear what you're saying with that. So we, we, treat, we are something different. I think we should treat them based on Ben's theory. We should treat them like how we used to treat crackheads in the 80s. Ooh, that's true, that's true. Okay, how does that? What do we do? Yeah, getting sandwich, getting true. sandwiches from them? Just, just get the hell out of here. <laughs> 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 you know, I it only came to mind because I had to um I had to travel back east a lot in the last four weeks. Um, you know, rest in peace to a couple people that have passed in my life. Um, yeah. you know, but I had uh you know I had relatives, I had other generational people. Yo, I'm keeping up with you, but I see your shoes. What are you, some kind of collector? And but when they referred to it, they always referred to it with so much joy. Like they were excited about it. Man, can you tell me about this? Or or I want to get this. Or I want to get that. And so as I've as I've traveled across the country, you know, and I'm out of my way, my main realm in Massachusetts out here, a lot of people don't know what to say. They want to say, hey, are you a collector? I'm like, nah, I just got shoes. I take care of my kicks. That's it. You know, I, I haven't really dwelled on it. So it's been something I've been playing on for a while. D, but those, are usually, those are usually the people, the people who, you know how they say, the great ones don't have to stay that great. You know, you're, you're a footwear professional. You know more about footwear than most people who have jobs <laughs> in footwear. Sure. So, so yeah. there's 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 something to be said for that. So it's like it it could be a status that you've achieved that you didn't have to call yourself. That's why you're having trouble naming it. Well, let me tell you something. When you actually go on the campus of the Mecca and you talk shoes and you have an entire table look at you like you're talking like they've never heard some of the information you're talking. That's some interesting shit. It is. Absolutely. Oh, I can only imagine. I'm trying That's to make my way out west there next you know, month, hopefully. To captivate, people, to captivate people there is pretty weird for me. A lot of people don't realize a lot of those people that work in that place are so encapsulated by what they're doing that they really don't have a lot of, I don't want to say access, they really don't care about everything else that's going on that affects normal consumers. Yeah. So for you to for Jesse to go there and kind of stun them with some of the information that he knows, I mean I, I think that's kind of regular because I know kind of the situation there where they're not necessarily studying everything that's going on in the outside world. Yeah. They're focused yeah. on what they're doing. I mean they'll they'll probably enjoy hearing some of that stuff, but it's not top priority for them. Well, the thing that's interesting about it, and I think maybe Paper can speak to this too, is that it's across the board. So I'm not just saying there in general. And I'm, I mean, there's quite a few companies out here, um, whether it's footwear or apparel. But you sit and you talk, you talk about uh, what the consumer really likes about their product, whether it's the materials, how it's constructed, why they wear it. You know, you have some of these people that are are in the in those walls that are like, oh, 
really? And it's just, it's surprising. It's surprising, but yep. you know, it is what it is. Yep. So, I mean, to, to that point, I mean, that's why we get some of the crap that we get, and that's why we get some of the good <laughs> stuff that we get. Because they they have no idea. They're following, I, I, I want to say, a blueprint from within their walls to say, all right, we need to do this, and to do this, we need to do X, Y, and Z. They're not saying, oh, people like tumbled leather, let's bring back tumbled leather, let's do that. This is, like, is that cost effective? No? Let's give them some cheap polyurethane bullshit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, I hate the plastics. I hate plastic on sneakers, man. I can't do it. That's why. Why Why you think you don't really get new buck anymore? You get some crazy, I don't know what kind of stuff they call now, that stuff, but that ain't, that ain't new buck. Mm-mm, that's that new new. <laughs> it's old. <laughs> that's that no no. That's that no no. I don't know what that is. It's, it's too dark. Is it, um. Anyway, y'all can go ahead. Continue. <laughs> I'm already right. getting fake materials wearing kid sizes anyway. Yeah. Oh, you man, gotta y'all be getting that for a minute in kid sizes. They be skimping yeah, on the air materials, Half of the sneakers painted. Yeah, yeah, your kid size, man. That's the real criticism of the sweatshop workers right there, because that's really kids making those kids shoes. <laughs> yeah, but the, the kids making those kids shoes don't care because they wearing flip flops. Exactly, flip flops made out of rubber bands and bamboo. No, nah, they wearing one dollar old navy flip flops. What you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> they wearing leftovers from the factory. <laughs> They're putting together the illest hybrid you ever seen. You think Jordan <laughs> can be the son of son of Mars? Mm-mm. They uh, wearing two left feet. That's what Juan they made the son of twelve year old Juan made the son of Mars All first. Right, stop it, stop it, stop at you guys. <laughs> Yo, you heard about the Elite Twenty Four at the Barclays? Well, that's what I'm getting ready to get into. Ben, were you reading my mind? <laughs> I, I might be. I was just thinking about it. So I mean, was trying to swag it. That was nice though. <laughs> Under Armour to sponsor the Elite Twenty Four game in New York City. So, Under Armour. Will be sponsoring New York's premier, well, one of the nation's premier high school basketball events, which will be celebrating its eighth annual, and it will be played, actually, Ben, under the Brooklyn Bridge at the historic tobacco warehouse. Nah, on Dumbo? Fourth at 7 p.m., and it will be televised on ESPNU. Ooh, see, oh. that's grassroots right there. I like that. Yep, so it'll be. And and the, the the historic tobacco warehouse is the former home for quite a few years of the Brooklyn Hip Hop Festival. So they've since moved out of there. So August twenty fourth, seven p.m. ESPNU, Under Armour sponsoring the Elite Twenty Four B Ball Tournament for some of the best high schoolers in the nation. If it's anything like last year in California, the way it's been for the last two years, I know 2010 there was problems, but um, if it's anything like the last two years that they've been, it's this is like All Star Weekend for high school kids. Like kids look forward to the Jordan Brand game. That's cool. That's a one day event. The Elite 24 is all weekend. There's dunk contests. There's three point shootouts. There's a version of the Skills Challenge, and you know it's Under Armour, so they're gonna give them a colorway that you'll not be able to buy in stores, and it's going to be a low top, and you'll, you'll never, ever be able to buy in stores, but it'll look cool. Don't be I, so sure about that, because... Uh, how least... do you know all this? Are you guessing, or how do you know all this? How do I, this is what I do. How do you know I do this? my trade. Ben, Ben's an insider. That's why well, we allow him on. On my recent trip to Marshalls, they got a plethora of Under Armour shoes, so... I like that you them. said that. They oh. all, earlier in this year, they all... TBs... We showed the team editions, all mm-hmm. sent to Marshalls and Rosses, and I loved yeah. it. I, I drove from New Jersey to Orlando, and I wanted to stop at every Marshalls to pick up a Bloodline colorway for like twenty dollars, mm-hmm. thirty dollars, which is the best basketball sneaker of two thousand eleven, by the way. Thirty nine ninety nine at Marshalls. Y'all go check y'all local Marshalls because they're there. So. Yo, check your local Marshalls size nine. I'm PayPal ready right now. Yeah. I don't. I don't. I don't do personal shopping for one pair of shoes. Now ready for Under Armour. <laughs> yeah, that sounds so crazy. I, I don't do... Jesse, stop it! Oh, put Jesse on timeout. I didn't even hear you. Personal shopping for one pair of shoes. I'm a professional shopper, so it's gonna have to be oh. a lot. Of bad. Oh. 
I, I get it for Sididi. What's that bleeding? It's the bleeding. Sididi. I'm a personal shopper. I don't do one thing. He's the most interesting sneaker aficionado alive. Oh, that hey, was man. Man. He's quaffed his base and said, "Nigga, do you see this beard?" <laughs> <laughs> you know what, yo? I got some, I got some sneakers that didn't go back to Derrick Williams two years ago. Five size fifteen, you might want them. Oh, I have some bitches. I mean, we could work something out, but I'm, I'm kind of uh, in intermission right now. There's a lot of shit that I don't like coming out, and I'm not really buying anything unless I really, 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 really like it. So, and, and one more pair is going to make that wall behind him fall. We ain't going to hear from Quav no more. <laughs> and between this one, the one in the bedroom, the one in the kitchen, I'm, I'm done, man. I, I, can't, I can't do this no more, man. It's, it's too much shit. I want to get it down to 100 pairs, but ain't nobody got no money. You are not getting that down to 100 pairs. No. I said I want to. I didn't say I was going to. Ain't nobody got no money. If, you, if your sister had balls, she'd be your brother. I was waiting. I was waiting for somebody to break out the old black people. Good night, Sean. Good night. The people in the hill one over. <laughs> I, I wish oh, I could man. get it down to a hundred. I mean, yeah. I got. <clears throat> If if somebody wear fifteen and got about ten thousand dollars on them, we could work something out. Mm. And that's that's only that's only for a couple of pairs. That's not even for all of them. I I'm mean, lucky I don't wear fifteen. Man, I, I, well, I'm, I'm trying serious. to have people start calling a four hundred one k. Be like, hello, Fidelity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want to cash Let me get out. Get that loan real quick. I'll pay the penalty. Cash me out. <laughs> <laughs> I know this counts as I know this counts as income against me, but size fifteen cake is giving everything away. Uh, <laughs> I got stuff that's one of twenty four, maybe one of two, maybe one of one. I don't I got a bunch of shit, man. It, I just need to see some money. I'm tired of all this, man. Y'all can have it. <laughs> he looked like he's getting ready to get up and walk away after that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. man, listen, you get all that money, you're gonna be like, "Yo, y'all want to come down? Let's go shopping." <laughs> no, nah, man, I'm gonna I'm be I'm gonna be traveling. That's what I want to do. My my passion is gonna be traveling, man. I'm tired of having to lug 500 pairs of shoes around in every state I go to, every state I move to, man. I'm tired of that stuff. That, it gets tiring. It's it tiring moving boxes. Oh, you ready yeah. to grab a vault? Nah, them in the vault. <laughs> I'd rather I'd rather have somebody enjoy these shoes because all they're doing is just collecting dust and dry rotting around me. I don't even get to wear them. I mean, I, I'm looking at a pair of Espos right now in a size 15. I think I wore them once. I mean, I don't I don't wear none of these shoes. This stuff just sits here. It's funny as so, uh as people come over and come into my little lair over here. I think I've. I think every time someone is coming to visit, I've been able to give away a pair of shoes. That's and you, got little, you got little feet, man. I, I, yeah. Yeah. Why, why, you, why you hate on us, size nine? Little feet. <laughs> why you always hate on us? Little, little feet. Little feet. Get out of here, uh, you little uh, foot person. No, I ain't got nothing to do with it. If, if, you hate on us, size nine. Not if everybody can be Sasquatch, all right? It ain't uh, y'all, y'all got this. Y'all got this weird little network of size nines, like. <laughs> It's going down. It's going down. Samples? 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 I don't know. You calling me Sasquatch. You just jealous of how my beard coming yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. You got wow. beard. Wow. You Did you just call me jealous of your beard? Dagger. You got wow. beard competition. OSD Beard Wars. Beard Wars. Beard Wars. Beard Wars. Step in the Beard Wars. You got beard yeah, competition. You're lucky I just trimmed up, too. Oh, oh. oh. You trim. Oh. Throw the black I'm thought. With a threat. With a threat. <laughs> OSD Beard Wars. Grow the black thought. We need to get Jake from, from One Solo Australia and Beard Alliance to get both of y'all mm. some teeth. Jake, if you're listening, hit me up. Yeah, Jake. <laughs> hey, like I said, give me about two or three more months, and then I'm going to be like the light-skinned Rick Ross. Huh? Oh, yeah, we don't want you to be that. <laughs> hey, don't want you to like that. <laughs> hey, if, I, if I take off my shirt, y'all ain't gonna have to blur out my teeth. Oh, 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 I, I drifted off for a minute, and then I heard if I take off my shirt, I was like, "Hey, 
<laughs> my, saying, ear, my ears are bleeding. <laughs> I've been working now, man. I'm getting buff. Y'all ain't ready for this, man. Oh, oh, oh. Jack and Bounce's old cops is working Ooh, out. Kill him. Okay. Ooh. Jesse, I see you climbing the mountains out there. You ain't ready for it. I got you. I can do that. <laughs> Oh, Jesse, Jesse out there calling the wild boy. You better watch it. Oh Lord! I can hang with that. I get Jesse, get me a clip. Jesse out there calling calling wild animals. Don't mess around. I take you up in the mountain and leave you. Snow it all. <laughs> hey, don't play around me. I leave you in the Everglades. You ain't gonna make it back. Them alligators. Ooh. Mm-mm, we'll find Jesse because he always tracking his fuel. Ooh, I know exactly. <laughs> <going. laughs> uh, you know, you know where you gonna find that uh, that fuel man and the alligator belly. Uh, <laughs> and I'll be showing up at your doorstep with some Crocs on, like, what up? Oh, man. <laughs> All right, guys, ladies and gentlemen who are watching, this I is quit. classic OSD right here. This is how it used to go down on audio. Go back. Yeah. Do it on video. Go back. Exactly. So, so. All right, so we're gonna get in. We gotta get into some geek talk, and I'm glad, you know, I say geek talk, respectively speaking, with all the respect in the world, because this topic right here I found really intriguing today, um, courtesy of Sports One Source, and the title here was intriguing, and then it got even more intriguing once I started reading. So, just in ridiculous, please weigh in on this. It says Brooks proposes a radical shift in the running shoe paradigm. Mm. And it says here, during the Outdoor Retailers show, Brooks released a white paper entitled The Stride Signature, reflecting the brand's extensive research in biomechanics over the last few years. Among the findings were that each runner's joint geometry and motion patterns are completely unique, going against the notion that issues such as overpronation are necessarily wrong and should be adjusted or fixed. Going against that, what do you guys think about that? Well, how is Brooks an authority on that? I mean, I know they've been in business for a while, but to just say that overpronation is is something that can't be corrected in that manner is is kind of far fetched because they're not they're not necessarily offering a solution. Now what they're saying through is their products that, or through that piece of paper. Let, let me so, read it properly. Let me read it properly here just to make sure it's it. it says among the findings were that each runner's joint geometry and motion patterns are completely unique, going against the notion that issues such as overpronation are necessarily wrong and should be adjusted or fixed. Yeah, but overpronation, I mean, you don't want to roll out. That that's no, not would, how you how you perfect your stride. I would agree with what they're saying in a way, though. Um, I've watched so many misdiagnoses of, oh, you have a high arch, so some doctor shoves a, uh, an insole that touches your arch and has you starting to supinate for no reason when a, when a high, rigid arch actually needs a shoe that forces you to pronate in into your natural uh, arch and, and foot pattern. So I've seen as a track coach and as an athlete that runs, um, I've seen the misdiagnosis of, of that happen so many, I mean thousands of times. So I can see what they're saying in terms of everyone's gait being natural. That's why, you know, uh, most most people in the know would tell you that the best training is barefoot on sand to allow your foot to do what it naturally does. So uh, they're not really saying anything radical. I think they're just the first to admit that all this extra technology might not actually be helping. Cool, cool. All right, so let me, let me, let me finish reading this here based on what you guys just finished weighing in and discussing. It says here, as such, as, as, I, just mentioned before, as I just mentioned above in the article, it says, as such, the focus is on keeping the runner in their stride signature or preferred motion path for as long as possible during their run. And it went on to say, in the 17-page paper, Brooks lays out its proposals and the scientific support for its research. It also noted that the research represents the police chasing me in my house as the sirens are getting closer. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it says, it also noted that the research represents the first iteration 
of research into such thinking and urge the industry to start a dialogue to help further the research. All right, I'm going to hit this in, in, in four points. First point is going to be athletic. Second point is going to be marketing. Third point is going to be your body. And the last point is going to be Brooks. First point being athletics. Mm -hmm. um, you know, your body is made up of primarily muscles. Those muscles grow, change. Nobody's body is going to look like it does today or yesterday. In order to have that kind of uh, balance in your body, you have to be working it out some way every day. And some people do, whether it's just getting up out of your chair to go to work, whether it's walking, whether it's sitting on your ass all day. You're moving in some way or fashion. When you move, the structure of your muscles in your body change. So here we are now, marketing, point two, where we have barefoot running, which is what people like Ridiculous and myself, uh, sports, um, <coughs> Barefoot is the way to go because it's the ultimate level of balance. It forces all of the muscles in your body to support you. No shoe, no technology. You have to use the muscles that are in your feet. Okay? So then you have overpronation. What is overpronation? weights without shoes because you drop them joints and you're gone so it just doesn't go that way but if this is not new and it's a marketing ploy by Brooks good luck uh, I think there's other things that they could do to take care of their market share um, but it's they're not doing anything radical here you know they pulled this out because they were at the show and <coughs> that's what it is it's not going to help them they are in the process right now of being over inventoried they have a lot of shoes with a lot of cushion, and their grasp on the market, from my perspective, is starting to get a little bit of a downward trend because we're getting in the holiday where fashion is coming into play more than sports. Sports well, is they, not going to come into play until after the new year when everybody's got resolutions. Supporting that argument And ASICs also, is kicking their ass. Sorry. Supporting that argument is exactly what you're saying is this is exactly how they market because they've never been – a Nike, uh, even an Under Armour has come in and taken Nike's playbook and said, you know what, we're going to be slick, we're going to be cool, we're going to throw a little bit of tech at you, but it's going to look real good. Um, the, the, the running shoe world, which is where Brooks is squarely at, has always been divided between the, the geek speak and the cool kids, always. Um, Asics, your Mizunos, your 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 Brooks, your New Balance, they they definitely have been on the geek side of things. I, I throw Mizuno in that because their shoes are so wild looking because of how the 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 Japanese aesthetic for strapping the foot, wrapping the foot, pulling here, pulling there, their aesthetic is born out of geek speak. Um, then then on the other side, you've always had 
your your Nikes, which really is where the cool kid line was drawn before, you know, with the marketing of it. Um, so so exactly what Jesse's saying is true. This is their way of saying or, or marketing their product uh, by using technology and using uh, biomechanics and big words and gobbledygook to tell you that, hey, we're in this too. <laughs> That's you know, exactly there's, only, there's only two companies out there right now. I don't mean to cut you off ridiculous, but there's only okay. two companies out there right now that have been consistent from day one in the running world, and that's New Balance and Asics. They have not yep. tried to go away from what they actually do. They may try to come up with a marketing campaign. They may try to make silhouettes, but they've never gone off the reservation and said, we're going to revolutionize everything. Everybody wants to revolutionize stuff. Uh, Reebok had a fold-up shoe. Nike comes with the free shoe. Um, then you got Vibrams. All of a sudden, we got a minimalist motion going on. Okay, yeah, we'll roll with some trends. But at the end of the day, when you look at those two companies, they are the ones that have stayed in their lane the whole time, which is why they continue to roll in a Benz and not a freaking Mitsubishi because they just keep going. We build shoes for people to run in and all people. I don't care if you're minimalist. I don't care if you got size 15s. There's something here we have for you. You don't have to come up with something else. You know, and all these other people that are trying to get into the game, you're riding their waves up and down, you know, are going to come up with something like this. Hmm. All right. All right. So for all intents and purposes, Basuda. Yeah, what they what they say Basuda? is Basuda, really? What they say isn't <laughs> off is, what they say is not off base. It's just never been off base. Like like Jesse said, it is what they're saying is right, but they're not saying anything new. Hmm. Well, Brooks really I, I, wants to do because they. Sorry, I don't mean they released an app recently too, uh, like a track your runner app or like an app where you can you can um, let other people that are wearing Brooks know what you're wearing and how your run was. They realize that they can't do what Nike did with Nike's no. social running or with the fuel <laughs> ban not, or getting people do. to do that. They yeah, can't do that. They, do. they can't do minimalist, and they can't do uh, anything style-wise because they don't yeah. have any lane there. So what do they do? they got to come up with something. And what do we do here? We don't MSU. They are MSUing because yeah. <laughs> they can't do nothing else. It's okay. Yeah. It's like, you know what I mean? I'd really in that boardroom and be like, look, it's all right. Let's make some cool colors. Well, and, and Let's talk is, about the fact that we're from Seattle and that we run in mountains, that we got funny colors, and and women from the ages of 35 to 45 love us. It's and okay if, they would, if they would do and if they would do a slight bit of marketing that is authentic <laughs> to what you're saying, like that glycerin, it's a great shoe. Yeah. It's, it's good looking. It's great cushioning, great support. All they got to do is just Tell people what they have, but like you said, they're MSU in right now. Yeah. Well, here's a here's a here's a here's a question in regards to what they should be doing and what worked for them, and I guess with times changing again, because it's funny when minimalist running, Vibram, New Balance, everyone else got on board. Um, at the time when that shift happened, Brooks had, and we reported here in the show too, probably two two and a half years ago. The Brooks Adrenaline was the top selling running shoe. <laughs> and something happened. <laughs> we don't know what, they don't know what, but now they're reacting, it seems, a little bit too late. I'll tell you what happened. And this goes back to me and Ridiculous, and he knows exactly what I'm talking about because he just mentioned it. The Beast. Yep. Period. The Beast yep. was the heaviest shoe on the marketplace for the last 25 years. Yeah, it works. Quite possibly the most appropriately named running shoe ever. The but beast. it's heavy. It's heavy <laughs> it's, as yep. can be. It and is so a beast. Everything was lighter, quicker, uh, minimalist, what it can be. So they're like, well, what can we do? Well, they took their upper materials and they made them lighter. But the sole of a Brooks shoe yep. today is still heavier than everything else and on the marketplace. Got one other and that's problem. coming from somebody who ran in them on Monday night. And they've got one other problem that coincides with that heavy shoe. Because the shoe was so heavy and so structurally a brick, they bodied New Balance for the blue hair vote. So uh, all, all of a sudden you had old people, very uncool, unstylish people, rocking your kicks for maximum orthopedic support. 
I just put a picture of the beast up on screen. Yes, sir. And that was usually accompanied by some compression socks because your blood flow was bad and, and some gray hairs. It's Dude, just the truth. talk about that Saturday Night Live skit. <laughs> <laughs> the, Brooks, it was the truth. Brooks the, the could have been the shoe that was on that Saturday Night Live skit where you were like, old white men wear what? Brooks. Yep. Yep. Middle, middle aged fat white boys wear what? Brooks. They do. They rock them <laughs> tough, man. I'm telling you. I see. I see it at the track and at the gym all the time. No disrespect, but that that because that shoe was so good at keeping you literally upright because it was a brick, it, it would not compress. And the, if you showed the medial side of that shoe, oh my goodness, there was so much tech holding that shoe up. What happened is that. Older people with structural problems, like structural problems beyond repair, um, surgeries, and, and that kind of thing, what, what the old New Balance nursing shoes used to be, Brooks became. So they lost their cool underneath the weight of this technology. A lot of people didn't understand what physical therapy was about or sports physical therapy. And I want to say this in the early 90s and 80s. And so you would have parents come in with kids or you'd have people in their 20s <coughs> come in and say, I went to the orthopedist, I went to the foot doctor, and he gave me these $300 orthotics. Yep. And I'm supposed to take these $300 orthotics and put them in this $130 shoe called the Brooks on top of what I've already uh, paid yeah. for. Yeah. And that's the only option I have so that I don't run crooked. No. And then structure on, top of structure on top of structure created what I said earlier, a supinator out of someone who didn't supinate. So what happens next? Knee problems. So yep. five years later, after you have orthotic <coughs> on top of beast, you go to the same physical therapy and say, why do my knees hurt? Because you're pushing them out, and the <laughs> ligaments on the left and right of your knee are no longer supporting you. Yep. D, do you recall this shoe, the Brooks Beast? Oh, man, I do. You know what? That's one of those sneakers that uh, many New Englanders, and I will say specifically in, in Massachusetts, that is a very popular sneaker. That is like I, I probably see I could probably say every day I will see a pair of Brooks Beasts on somebody's feet. In, more in so my, more so than the Air Monarch? Oh yes, absolutely. This is absolutely. the cool shoe to the monarch. You can graduate from the monarch to this. To this, right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Wow. You are wow. correct. Shout you out to the homie Jason Maiden. What's up, Jason Maiden? Yeah, we talk about you. I don't want to look old, youngin. Give me something new and flashy. Yeah, no. Oh, you want the blue, blue beast or the black beast? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the beast. Uh, wow. Y'all gonna learn today. You gonna learn exactly. Yeah, line. Now you them, them shoes usually came with a head smack because it was some old dude rocking them. Yeah. So oh, you get off my lawn. All right. So there we have it with Brooks with their report. Um, let's go into WTFD because um, <laughs> this shoe that we're talking about tonight, mm. man, I'm just going to pull this up on screen and then you can just have that. I just need to sit back and laugh at this whole thing. What? Wait, what does that say? It says, these sneakers come with a built-in tent for when you need a private moment. Mm -mm, no. Courtesy of Fast Company. These look like some Jeremy Scott shit, first off. They sure yeah, do. Yeah, they do. Here we go. Here's a good shot. Ew. <clears throat> Wait, wait, is that a tent on the back of the shoe? She can pull that's that off tent. and make it a yes, tent? That's, yes, that is a tent on the back of the shoes. We are officially in WTF land, unless some hipster decides to holler at us and decide that these are pretty cool. Yep. They have a tent. Here's a better shot. You have silenced the crew. <laughs> <laughs> I have. Ain't nobody saying shit. <laughs> No one's saying anything. No. Well, it's one of those, you know, it's one of those sneakers where you take something that's purposeful, a sneaker, and then you add, you know, a home of source, a convertible home inside the sneaker. So you're doing, you're, you're actually stacking, right? 
You're taking something that is made for one thing. You're adding a removable, buildable home, right? A pop-up tent in a sneaker. When have you ever seen something like this done before? Yeah, and, the beauty, and the beauty is you have the ability to basically set up shop in any place that you want. Does this possibly you know, fix the temporary homelessness issue in the United States or the world? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and y'all are laughing. But, but okay. Oh, no. You are caught off guard. Uh, yeah. You are Ooh. all. You find yourself all of a sudden locked out your house at 3 a.m. in the morning. Wow. Blow you that have, bad boy up. You, you have misplaced your keys. You too can set up shop <coughs> and have a home and pitch your tent because your tent is in your sneakers. Well, you have a tent in his tent. That is the real deal. Or you and your lady friend or your male friend have had a beautiful evening walking through <laughs> and you're in Central Park you're in the Boston Ooh. Common and you decide that you want to take it to the next level you say baby yes I do have a tent <laughs> let me get that right side <laughs> or you are in the Caribbean vacationing here you go and then Dexter Star comes down and he says, Girl, on the beat. Me and you under the stars in my tent right now. Well, Wanna show you some loving? You want me some loving, some good sweet loving now. Oh, God. So, you pitch your tent. Literally. I like how you're pitching for the pitch. You're pitching yes. your tent. Well, oh, you, you pitch a lot of different. Um, a lot of things, so I'm going to keep it uh, PG right now, but I will say, these definitely caught me by surprise. I said, really, what is this? I, I, is, this what I, is this some new Jeremy Scott shit that I missed? <laughs> I mean, That's what I thought. Yeah. You know, yeah. and these are brought to us by, you know, the, the beauty is the walking shelter kicks means you could pitch your tent, your shoe tent, wherever you want to go. Brought to you Whoa. by Sibling. Truly taking walk good, sleep good, whatever good, to the next level. That's walking bad. That's walking bad. Okay. Do we see this illustration of the tent on screen? Wait. Yeah, wait. get that Fast Company ad out of there. Though. There you go. Oh, word. Let me see that. Wow, that whole tent is in the shoe? Yes. It's like a gypsy. Well, it's left and right. There's a one piece in the left shoe and one another in the right. Right. You know what? <clears throat> I got a, I got a marketing plan for this shoe right now. Oh God, here we go. We're gonna send this shoe over to the Middle East. Okay. And give it to the Muslim woman. It's a burqa in a shoe. Burqa in a shoe. Yes. Burqa in a shoe. I got there you. There you go. You know, you know how many Muslim women there are in the world? Instant market. Right there. That is my fault. Shut this mic the fuck off. <laughs> I'm telling you. How many how many times has a Muslim woman gone out and maybe ripped her burqa or got oil on it or got hummus on her burqa? Never. <laughs> good night. Good night. Stop. 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 <laughs> burqa in a shoe. Someone mute him quickly. Quickly. Uh, I'm telling you, man. God, they really muted him. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I would put it out in a galaxy color. Can't mute the truth. Lining up. Burger in the shoe. <laughs> you put it out in a. Did you say a, a galaxy colorway, Ben? Put it in a galaxy colorway with a glow in the dark soul and give it to the first five people in every sneaker lineup. Wow. Okay. They love it. Hey. That's crazy. I. I. I I am waiting for the day, and we're going to see this, and I'm going to put money on it. We're going to see either Pharrell or Will I Am wearing these on the red carpet this fall at some point. <laughs> yes, you heard it here first, people. Wearing the tent. 
Yep. No, it's gonna, it's gonna be two chains. Uh, two chains. Uh, okay. Yeah, no, it's, it might, it's gonna be Trinidad James. Is who's gonna be? Yeah, there. him. I can see that. Wearing wow. It. You're gonna see one of those athletes or entertainers who's always getting evicted or owing the IRS money. <laughs> <laughs> That's who this shoe is perfect for. Folks we move like on Lauren, to the next WTF, please. Folks like Lauren Hill. <laughs> wow. Jesse's like, I've had enough. I've had enough. That's enough. Move it along. That's enough. All There's right. Many people get paid all this bullshit. Besides yes. <laughs> okay. All right. Oh, gosh. Now we're going into real shoes. Mm-hmm. Let's start with... Let's start with some good. Let's start with some really good. That good, good. Well, I said that facetiously, but... Yeah, I was going to say, which way do you want to go? You want to go with the uh, Under Armour? No, we're going with... Since we're on a roll tonight. The Nike LeBron 7. 11. I mean, excuse me, 11. Parachute mm. Gold. I like them. You like them. Okay. I like Why? Them. Have you held a pair? Why you like them? I they feel answer. like a real basketball sneaker. It feels like they skipped the elite version and went straight to it the first time around in the mm. in the regular sneaker, and I like that. I don't like making a half a sneaker and then when the playoffs come, you make an elite sneaker. This feels like the elite sneaker. It doesn't have a lot of carbon fiber. The thing that I like about it, it has a pull in the heel, so you can pull like like a heel tab, so you could actually put your sneaker on. I feel every sneaker in the world should have that. Um, I like it. Maybe not that color, but I've seen a black and a red. i seen... Have you put it on? Yeah, I like it. It has, like, this weird cushioning in the toe. It almost looks like foam. It almost feels like foam. I don't have a pair of foam posits, but if I had to imagine foam posit, like the uh, the poured, like the liquid, the actual oh, foam, that's what it looks like. Well, I'm glad you mm. said that, Ben. Allow me to read a bit of the description here, courtesy of the shoe game. Shout out to them. It says, the Nike LeBron 11 set to drop soon. This latest LeBron sneaker will introduce a new material never seen on an LBJ model. Mm. Armor posit. Armor posit. Oh, shit. Armor. <laughs> I mean, okay. one of the first colorways to release is Parachute Gold. Hmm. Now, this version will release on October 12th, and here is the breakdown of the retail prices. Wow. For men, $200. Grade school, one forty. God damn. Preschool, seventy. Hmm. Toddler, fifty. Wow. That's a damn shame. Remember when men's Jordans were one twenty-five? <clears throat> I Man. remember when men's Jordans were sixty-five. I don't know what it is about these these sneakers though. When I look at them immediately in the first picture, they just automatically look like they're forcing to be pigeon-toed. I'm telling you, man. They it's, look like wedges. <laughs> they, do, like, they do look like wedges. It's it's just a weird shape. And again, go to a different angle. Go to a put different up another angle. picture, Sean. You got another Sideways, picture? Sideways, it's not you bad. Have a, yeah, you have a profile. I mean, we still have this overgrown... It, it looks like something the, the, the goblin would wear. <laughs> the goblin. <laughs> That's, that's what it looks like. The green goblin from freaking Spider-Man would wear this sneaker. Goblin realness. Okay. Why is it called Armor Posit? What's the difference? Oh, okay, Gold without posit, getting in trouble, isn't posit. it supposed to be a space theme? Like a like a meteor theme for the entire year? No? Is first of all, is? first of all, the back part of the shoe, that looked like the Kobe logo on the back of both of those shoes. The Shinzuwa. That's taken mm -hmm. off of the one they did for him with the playoffs that got a lot of a lot of publicity, all the diamond yeah. shaping. Okay. Yeah. That was exactly what was going on in terms of the the, the design and yeah. aesthetic. Now they're trying to add some depth to the aesthetic by using the armor posit. Yeah, that swoosh is stupid. Same hmm. one that was on the front, now it's on the side. Yeah. That fly wire situation remains to be stupid. The fly only using the fly wire the way it's supposed to be used as a form of structure throughout the side of the shoe to, to tie it, not the entire shoe. So, I give him a break on that. Still bullshit. The overall concept of fly wire is bullshit. Dynamic fly wire or regular fly wire? All of it. It's bullshit. All of it? It's all bullshit. Hmm. 
Only thing I care about this is to see what Marsh will do with it. Other than that, they can. <laughs> <laughs> now that's the best statement of the night, right there. What's going to be a hard thing to paint? We know Marsh is listening. So Marsh, what are you gonna do with the armor posit? Hmm. <laughs> I love how they just made up a new name for the same material they put on a different shoe. For real. Armor Posit. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's just good. Or a player like LeBron James, do you think he needs more cushion or less cushion? If you look at LeBron James, his stature, his body, the way they do it, <coughs> does he need more cushion or less I cushion? Personally, I personally, not, I hate to wish this on an athlete in any caliber. Don't say it. <laughs> don't, don't, don't you dare. I know what you're going to say. Don't, don't say it. Dare. We wouldn't be OSD if I didn't say it, so I have to say it. Wow. This shoe looks like he's going to get hurt in it. Wow. You going to put him on the ACL hit list? Say again? You going to put him on the ACL hit list? Mm. No, I'm saying a sprained ankle, something where he's going to realize this ain't the shoe for him. Why, why, why do you say that? It's the lightest LeBron in a while. If it's you're looking at it, what do you floor. see that makes you think he's going to hurt himself? The lower profile. It just looks like it's not it's not going to be as supportive as he needs. When I'm thinking about certain things that he does on the court, and I don't see this shoe helping him. No, he, they, did they, in that picture, did they take out the insole? Because the insole was uh, significantly different from a couple of his other models. Mm -hmm. So there's also technology in the insole. So do you think a player like the ground needs to be closer to the court or further away? That man is 250. There's I don't know. There's, there's, it's, I, I don't know. That's a hard call because he's done both with his shoes. But this shoe just looks like it lends itself to him twisting an ankle and doing something that he normally does. Jesse, it needs to be a combination of both because of the way that he plays. He's not a stagnant, stay-in-one-place player. So he does make a lot of lateral side-to-side -side cuts, but he also needs a substantial shoe to absorb the, the shock that from when he comes down and hits the ground because he's always up in the air. So it's got to be a combination of both. Yeah, right. yeah I gotta, I gotta, Aesthetically, the shoe looks like shit to me. He didn't, he, didn't like, he didn't like the air pocket. He didn't like the full-length air pocket. When you're sitting on an air pocket like that, especially on a basketball court, you can't – it's hard to get something on the bottom of an air pocket that was that big in his last shoe that's going to keep you from not rolling left or right. So now what you've done is you've lowered him back down so that he can't roll left or right, and they took the cushion that he needs for rebounding, and they put it inside in the insole. So there's zoom air. They went away from the air. That, the lining in that shoe, the midsole in there, inside, if we can get some specs on it, I believe, is zoom air. So you have zoom air, a large zoom air cushion in the heel, and probably lunar and zoom in the front. Yeah, but yeah, the it was full length zoom in. But but the last shoe was zoom air. It was just visible. Full no, length. It was full length. No, it was, it was, just, it was double, a full length. It was, it was a double stack zoom air. On on the, the double last. stack. You're right. The double stack. It's a double stack zoom air. That it was a very large air pocket reminiscent of the Air Max. But if you compare the the zoom air pocket in the last LeBron to an Air Max, the Zoom Air is a stiffer air pocket. So that's to give him the stability that he needs, but it, it still was reminiscent of an Air Max. If so you I don't have think to encapsulate it in that person. plastic for that visibility, for that look, it's mm -hmm. not going to work. It's not going to hold no. up. It's not going to give him what he needs. It's not. And that's why they were like, you got, he's, that's why he said you got to take it out, because it's not. it mm -hmm. will not support someone playing basketball. That's why you don't mm -hmm. see any Air Maxes on the court either. Can't do it. Yo, the plastic urethane wrong, will give away, and it just does not support. It takes away from what the Zoom Air can actually do, which is Unless, why it's back into the insole stuff. The only way you can do that is if you wear a new pair every uh, quarter. Right, right. Because you're going you're gonna to bottom out that shoe from quarter to quarter if you wear Air Max on court. Like, now, Scotty, Pippen, Scotty Pippen never wore uh, an Air Max. Yeah, he wore Zoom. Right. He wore Zoom. Right. Like all of his all of his signature shoes are all Air Max, but what he played in was all Zoom. Yeah. All of his PEs are Zoom. Yeah. And you know, don't forget about your three other or your two other co-stars of the Nike brand right now are both playing in hybrid basketball slash soccer shoes. So, you know. Yeah. He ain't gonna be too far off. 
Well, the the other the other marquee players in Nike, like let's say Kobe. Kobe is is somewhat of a different player than LeBron so far as height, stature, and weight. So he's gonna need something that's gonna keep him lower to the ground and more responsive. And for him, I think he just prefers a low top shoe rather than a high top or mid top shoe. So that's why you're gonna get something different from the Kobe line than the LeBron line, because they. LeBron is a beast. LeBron is, is a big dude. Pause. But um, it, it's just going to be a totally different shoe from player to player. Well, yeah, of course. But that's why, you know, that's why you're going to – there's – and you know this from experience. Um, there's only so much technology that you're going to have in a given season. And if they're bringing back Zoom for LeBron and for Kevin Durant, it's going to have to work for LeBron, too. They're not going to, you know, yeah, he has his own line, but they're not going to create something just for LeBron. they got to use that shit for everybody in some way. Well, they'll, I think that they would introduce something with LeBron and then pass it out towards other shoes, whether it be through his soldier line or whether it be just through another just marquee basketball type of thing. You saw that with uh, Flywire and the Hyperdunk. Because the, the Hyper Dunk was initially like a, a Kobe signature shoe, but Kobe never really did anything with that. And then it, it, it's, it, it's just an introduction piece. So we'll probably see this armor posit if it does well on the LeBron, on other shoes, whether it be just in the heel cap or just in the midfoot or something like that. But You're going to see a lot like of that, armor posits. I'll tell you that right now. You're going to see a lot of armor posits starting with Holiday. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But if why? People, it's just the same foam posit material. Uh, they haven't they haven't given the story behind it. You know once the machine gets behind it, everybody's going ooh and ah over that shit. Yeah, you're right. I do like the position of it, though. It's, it's kind still, of... It's still a posit. look at the elite... I'm sorry? I said it's still a posit, so you know it's not too different. But, yeah, there's going to be a story around it. But I was saying I like the position where it looks to be. The paneling, like, it looks like where the carbon fiber was on the elite... For like a more of a lockdown feel, I like the way that it looks to be there, so you're not moving around side to side in your shoe, which happens. If you look at the bottom of that shoe, the sole, the outsole you just showed, that outsole, if you pull up a picture of the new Jordan 28, they're gonna look a lot alike. Yeah, that's what I th that's what I thought I was looking at when I first pulled up the picture. Separated into two pieces. That's what I thought I was looking at. The Jordan 28 looks like that on the bottom. Yep, sure does. I don't know. It, it all depends on the response to the price point in the shoe. I mean, like I said, the machine hasn't gotten behind it yet. This is a lot of kind of preview type stuff to whet the appetite. But, uh, I mean, once the machine gets behind it, everybody's going to jump on the bandwagon for the shoe. Except me, because I think it looks like shit. Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong, guys, but is this a price drop from the LeBron 10? If no, it's an increase. It's an increase. Is it increase? Twenty dollar increase from the one eighty MSRP from uh. Yeah, it's a it's an increase. Okay, so they had so many other versions out. I was assuming, but the elite version was, and and that first version with the Nike Plus was two twenty five, right? Yeah, with the LeBron ten, you had three different price points. You had the base <laughs> version, you had the sports version, and then you had the elite version. Right. So, you you're gonna have the different price points. Now, I haven't heard anything about this being plus. So I think they may have moved away from that with all that uh, other bullshit and moved it into maybe a mediocre shoe because that, uh, like I was saying before, it, it's everybody's price conscious. So them raising this 20 bucks and maybe not giving them a plus would probably benefit them more in terms of trying to sell more of just the base version. So, but yeah, it's, it's an increase. Until the machine gets behind it, I don't think people are going to be uh, too keen. Jesse so, or Quab, is this what you were making reference to? Yeah, look, yeah, the insole. It's it's a Lunar Line insole with Zoom Air. So they they've taken taken it out of they, at least the Zoom Air. They've taken it out of it being visible, like on the LeBron 10, and put it in the insole. So with that, 
that's going to give you more uh, kind of cushioning stability for your lateral side to side moves. The Lunar Lawn is going to give you more cushioning so far, cushioning and light weight so far as being able to absorb that shot from when you come down. And I'm thinking that the armor posit is to uh, more of a stabilizing material to kind of lock your foot into place, looking at the position, looking at where it's positioned on the shoe. I do like the way it says LeBron one side and upside down is James. I do like that. Side. So the original foam yeah. posits when Penny actually played in them, you can, you can actually play in that shoe. It's a good ball shoe. And if you look at that shoe, it's a low-profile zoom with the outsole of the shoe. The clear, the clear outsole actually wraps around certain points of the front of the shoe. Mm -hmm. and that's to give him the ability to cut left and right and still be comfortable. So they're going back to the original, a little bit to the original mold of using foam posit. You cannot use, for somebody like LeBron, because he's so big, but he's also agile, you can't use an Air Max pocket. It just won't work. And if you encapsulate the Air Pocket in, say, like a Lunar Lawn, the shoe becomes too heavy, and he doesn't want anything too heavy. So this is what you had to do. Again, if you look at the very first iteration of the of the SB, it's got a zoom air sole in the heel. So they've been doing this for a while. They just don't didn't realize what they had, and now they're coming back to it. Mm -hmm. And I mean, uh, initially, with uh, one like I was saying, once the machine gets behind, initially the design aesthetic that I heard uh, was uh, he loves uh, the Dark Knight. So the shoe is designed after the car. The Batmobile. The Dark Knight. Yeah, the Batmobile in the Dark Knight. Hmm. So I don't know if they're going to play that up, but initially that's what I was hearing with these. Uh -huh. so uh -huh. that, that's uh, kind of the design <laughs> aesthetic and the design inspiration that they got this from. That actually makes me like these shoes a little bit. If that's I told, I'm telling you, once the machine gets behind it, People are going to eat this shit up because that's what they do. I mean, they put out, if you're not, not, not to say that you aren't, but if you're not a person of sound mind and can make judgments on your own and say, I don't like something before they put the machine on it, then you're, you're good. But once Nike puts the machine behind these products, you're, you're stuck, man. People will fall in line and pay $200 for this shoe once they put that machine behind it. They give you a good story. They give you a fancy commercial. They give you a couple of South Beach colorways. And you in for a grand already. A stack. <laughs> That's so true. Well, you, you know. Like you said, right. already. That's so like true. You, like you said, you know, Batman, that, was, that movie, what, a good year old now, but LeBron likes it? <laughs> What was the big story that came out of Comic Con this year? Can anybody tell me? Um, no, you tell us, please. Ha! I don't know. That's that the next Superman is going to be Batman a combination of Superman and Batman together. So Nike has already stepped into that realm. Hmm. I'm already getting anybody that's even thinking about the Superman Batman movie. Oh shoot! You know LeBron shoe is a homage to Batman. He's on the Batman side. Guarantee you, may come out with a Superman colorway. All they got to do is ride that trend right now. Yeah, that's true because he does have Superman LeBron threes, right? Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah I think I, I think I got those right here. Superman and Batman, that's all it's about right now. The comic book movies, all that shit is real hot right now. So you stay in the conscious mind of the public and society or in the entertainment realm. You have all kinds of channels to market this shoe through. Even if the sneakerheads don't like it. You're going to have people that, you know, now Petrie? you have a shoe to be in the movie. Is this Petrie? Did Petrie do this? Ooh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I don't remember. I just, the only thing that stuck out in my mind was the reference to Batman. So I, I don't remember when I was reading up on that shoe. I need well, to do some research. Well, now we see, actually, again, again shout outs to, um, you know, to the shoe game. They actually have the black and red version as well. So you, you can compare. You know, some people may actually like this colorway versus the parachute gold. At he the end wore of the this day. shoe last year. He wore this shoe. 
he was he was wearing this shoe when he practiced. Okay. When he was in yeah, the it, was all, it was an all black version that he practiced. Yeah, he wore an all black version that he practiced. Okay. So yeah. this shoe is already you know some folks have already seen it. You know, is this shoe does this shoe warrant though a two hundred dollar price tag? No Just shoe from the two hundred dollar price. Know, tag. Like okay. I was saying, once they put the machine behind it, you're hmm. gonna be in for a stack easy. Hmm. And it's playing on the minds of the weak. It ain't worth two hundred, but I got it, so I'm gonna spend it. Wow. It's gonna be interesting to see. Interesting to see for sure. Because well, I think this is one of those sneakers that again, either people will love right out the gate, or just like you said, SFK, people are gonna you know buy into the you know, buy into the marketing, the storytelling behind it, and more importantly what LeBron James does on the court in a game while wearing that particular pair of sneakers. Of course, if you look at, at the marketplace right now and you're a little bit kind of introspective, look at how early the KD6 came out. Mm. Look at how late the Kobe is coming out. They are segmenting their audience with their shoes. They know that they can get a lot of sales from the KD shoe, one, because it's a lower price point, Two, okay. because they can put it out in 50 million colorways and people are going to eat that up because it's that lower price point. Once you drop that LeBron closer to the holidays in October, look at the release date. It's in October. Closer to the holidays, that's when the, the pocketbooks open up. So you're going to start off with a, 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 a lower price point for a player that's well-liked who's essentially the people's champ. And people eat that stuff up. I mean, the KD is doing phenomenal so far as I can see. People are eating all that stuff up. I yeah. think it's maybe on the third colorway so far, and you're still in summer league. I, you know, you, you got to ask yourself these questions. Why are they doing this? They're setting you guys up. You buy a KD, then you buy a LeBron, and the Kobe's going to come out. And from what I hear, the Kobe 9, I think, is going to be Flywire. Not Flywire, hey. Flyknit. Excuse me. KD, so, owns, KD owns the summer. KD yeah. owns the summer. LeBron will come back for holidays. You will not hear from Kobe until he gets back on the court. You are not going to see marketing dollars put behind Kobe until he's back on the court because his previous year was doing well enough where they don't have to, and you have to get, you have to get behind KD because his mm -hmm. popularity is ridiculous, but at the end of the day, LeBron's the winner, so he's going to be at the holiday because he's your $200 shoe. Of course. But you're not gonna it, you're not gonna see a marketing campaign around Kobe until he gets back on the court, maybe. So hmm. that's what you get after holiday. Like in my mind, I, I don't think you're gonna see it until maybe late December, early January, so far as combining the whole wellness thing, the whole renewal thing, so far as New Year's resolutions, and Kobe getting healthy enough to get back on the court. You can tie all of those things back in together with the Kobe marketing campaign because wow. people are thinking in their mind, oh, I got to get back in shape, New Year's, da, da, da. Oh, Kobe's back on the court. He's brand new. He's got a bionic heel or whatever the hell they did to his heel or whatever. I got to <laughs> get his shoe. Wow. You got Gavin over here laughing his ass off with that <laughs> <one>. <laughs> A bionic heel. A bionic yeah, heel. I don't, know, man. I don't know what they do. How does this dude? How is this dude walking and he's got tears in his Achilles? Dude, gotta have a bionic heel, man. Come on. A Rod Come Doctor. Hmm. For real. <laughs> well, paper. A Rod Doctor. Paper. We gotta talk about. Let's. I, I'm tired of talking about LeBron. Uh, yeah, I, that, that was that was I, for an interesting conversation. I, I, well, let's talk about look. a new model that's getting buzzed, though. Okay. Let's Which talk one? about a new model. Which is oh damn it, wrong link. But I'm sure. gonna pull up in a minute. We'll go to Under Armour first. Let's go to Under Armour. The Under Armour Spine. The Under Armour Spine Game Day TR. Hmm. Is it, it, it? Is it a copycat? Is it too much of a copycat sneaker? A copy of what? A copy of I mean. You mean you look at Come the on, spine. Young in. Don't even ask that question. Okay. <laughs> I, I, even, no, I'm curious. Saying, I'm curious. Even Ray Charles could see this. No, let me stop. <laughs> Come on. I mean, you gotta school him. Tell him what it is. Oh, man. Tell him what it is, D. Tell him what it is. 
Come on, Jesse. Jump Tell in. Tell what it Jump is. Jump in. We're gonna do. We're gonna do double Dutch. Dutch now. Shoot, you go. Here you go. You go first. Geez. Here you go. You what go do first. you What do you see, Youngin? Do you, I know you don't think you see new technology. I see hyperfuse like activity. There's I see a one. basketball shoe with There's a little two. bit of a higher ankle, so maybe I can wear it when I'm training in the gym. Cross which is training. What Brand Jordan is trying to do because it's football season. Mm -hmm. No. 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 What's good? And then we can, we don't even see the um, the the um, the medial side. The medial side is reminiscent of the Air Trainer SC. So you, again, you have this mashup of a, of a sneaker again that's being reintroduced. I mean, we know that Under Armour's first foray into the footwear world failed miserably. They've you know they basically hit the reset button, come back really really good. Cam Newton stuff, the basketball stuff uh, has hit. You know, this sneaker is a cross training sneaker that they're calling the game day trainer, right? So they want you to, they want the athlete or the person who wears this sneaker to go from the gym, just like Jesse said, go from the gym working on training to go to the basketball court to go to running, go for a light jog because you're not going to run a marathon in this, but you Definitely will train not. it. You do some stair aerobics, step aerobics, or even uh, again. Uh, stair climber type training. You may see some high school players attempt to wear this on the basketball court, though blacktop or hardwood. That solo come apart in a blacktop in a day. It, it it may. I mean, again, you'd have to have someone to actually wear test it to find out. But look at it. They painted it to make it that color. It ain't lasting. Mm -mm. Anybody got a shot of the bottom of it? Let's see. Nope. No additional shots. I'm gonna say it's the same spine sole that they all have now since they retooled it for basketball. Just retooled it, okay. Yeah, that's, spine that's sole is for, so for then, running. So, so then the it sits. The spine sole came from running. So then it sits very high. So then, you, so then you run the risk of overpronation and particularly, mm -hmm. uh, you know, someone rolling their ankle because it sits very, very high. I mean, if you look just at the mid, you know, middle region of the midsole, that is. Extremely high to be playing, or to be even running in. I mean, you can't call everything game day. You can't call everything a, a, a field trainer because that's the season you're in. There's no aspect of this shoe that has attributes for you to go from a gym to a turf or to grass. If you look at the bottom of that shoe, you're slipping. If it's morning dew, if it's a little bit wet, if there's sweat on the gym floor, you will fall and hurt mm -hmm. yourself. <clears throat> so you cannot well, wear this shoe. Well, here's a, here's a, here's a brief description to uh, confirm, refute, whatever the case may be. This all-purpose trainer packs an MPZ 360 open mesh upper designed mm -hmm. to air out hot workouts. Right. A 4D foam midsole is made to custom form to the foot. Right. Done so in lightweight fashion. Coming right. in at, I don't know if this is total weight or just the upper, but it says coming in at 12, 12 ounces. 12, 13 sounds and about right. created yeah. for going hard in the gym. The Under Armour Spine right. Game Day TR is available in an explosive charcoal colorway at finish line now right. for $90. Okay, the MPZ. 12, 12 ounces is scary. Right, it's very light, but the MPZ. Let's start at the MPZ 360 open mesh, which is basically as the foot, you know, as your feet heat up, and you step down, mm -hmm. you're blowing the hot air out, out of the top of the shoe, the top of the shoe, as well as on the medial and lateral side. But more importantly, it also offers some water resistancy. So if you're out again walking, in you know running in the rain and training in the rain, it's not going to allow a ton of water in. So it's breathable out, you know, try to keep the bad stuff out, you know, from hitting your foot. Okay. An accident waiting to happen. The 4D foam, I mean, some people may compare that to, um, oh, jeez, Meta World Pieces balling footwear sneakers, which is absorption yeah. material. Uh, it is really, really good. You literally can wrap your hand in that, and someone can take a sledgehammer and hit you on the hand with it, and... You will not feel it. It is that that type of that type of a material. It is very absorbent and disperses 
um, pounding in weight as your foot lands. You're going to see more women in this shoe than men. More women, huh? You're going to see more women, especially fitness women, in this okay. shoe than men. What makes you think that, Jesse? I, I, it's an I, indoor shoe. So it's comfortable. Mm. It's got the structure inside. You can squat in it. You can do heavy lifts in it, and you're going to okay. have a, a comfortable shoe, especially indoor. You can do that, but you're not. You can't. That shoe is no good once you step outside. It's no good. Mm. That's why all the seven and a halves are sold out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's no good. But in, inside so of him, so, so is the fifteen. On a rug. That's the sun you know bottom. Maybe okay, on let's a, look at that sole. Okay, show that uh, sole of the sneaker. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Okay, see, there we go with the sole. That's you a bust your ass waiting to happen. Yeah, oh. thank you. Thank you. Hmm. That's a, be slightly slick, and you're That's down. a high. I have a super size, <laughs> I have a super size order of bust your ass. <laughs> hmm. no. See, here's, here's the thing that, that they're kind of. Uh, it, not necessarily saying that they're taking from Nike, but uh, just taking from the the shoe manufacturer's handbook. They're taking the same outsole that they've used, outsole midsole that they use for other shoes, including the BB spine, and putting it on a different shoe so it's more cost effective for them. They right. don't have to produce another mold for midsole outsole. They'll just change the upper. <coughs> the, that's why they can offer this shoe at a ninety-dollar price point because they've they they already have the mold already created. Now, to Jesse's point, it, it's more of an indoor <clears throat> indoor trainer, if you even want to call it that, because yeah. if you look at the footbed on this shoe, it's not wide enough to support lateral side-to-side -side movements as a cross trainer should. So it, it's it's more along the lines of kind of a if you want to call it an all-purpose shoe rather than a cross trainer, because it, it's not necessarily a real cross trainer from what I can see by definition. Because anytime you're dealing with a cross trainer, you have a wider footbed to support lateral side to side movements. You Lot do of have the little, foot. Yeah, in the forefoot. And then you do have the, uh, the curl at the front of the toe to support pronation just in case if you're running or you're on the treadmill or something like that. But there are just a lot of just kind of design cues that I think they've missed in terms of calling it a cross trainer. Do, do the, the specs for a cross trainer in terms of being able, you know, they say cross trainer, you should be, a little, be able to do a little bit of everything in it. But it's mainly an indoor shoe for you to wear in your gym or if you need to, to uh, you know, maybe be in an aerobics class. It's supposed to have a durable enough sole Well, if you want to play basketball for 20 minutes, if you want to play tennis for 20 minutes, it will stand up for that, which is fine. But you can't, the most you can run in a cross trainer, technically, is about two miles. Mm -hmm. Anything over two miles in your body is going to start breaking down because the shoe is just not built like a traditional running shoe. That's why it's called a cross trainer. So mm -hmm. this shoe here... It's not wide enough in the forefoot, and if you look at a true cross trainer, all cross trainers, this shoe is made like a basketball shoe. It's not yeah, made it's, like a cross trainer. You can see it twisting already on the left where you got that crease. It's already twisting on the inward. So you start to move out laterally, that shoe is going to bust on the right side where that gray stitch matches that orange. That is where you're going to find the first hole in this shoe. It's going to come apart right there. Yeah, that's if you're doing a lot of lateral side to side movements because which one. What you're doing in a gym now, unless yeah. you're squatting and heavy weight, which I said, why you're going to see smaller fitness women who are trying to do a lot of squats and shit, they're going to be in that shoe. Well, they're Where's not even. Go? Marketing, I, I doubt if they're marketing this towards women because I mean the first colorway that we've seen is this gray and orange. So. But, they, but, that's, they, how, but that's how they're making their money. They don't have to market it to those women. They're already they're doing other things for those women. Where they're going to be like, oh, I can get a guy shoe because my foot's too wide anyway, and this looks kind of nice, and it's a cross trainer. They'll, they'll yeah. they'll buy it. That's why it's, she, the small size is gone, you know? If she's buying men's shoes, she needs to be in the gym. <laughs> I ain't messing with her. <laughs> oh, God. Hey, I'm just speaking nothing. the truth, man. Not for nothing. This shoe looks good. very air escapish. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. Very air escapish. I mean, 
this shoe has this shoe does have crossover appeal. Once you buy it for what they tell you it's good for, and you realize you can't use it for that, it'll work for crossover appeal. You can wear it to chill in, but I mean, like Ben said, the spine, you know, the spine tooling is actually a very solid tooling for the court. You know, it, it court, does. Yeah. Yeah. But to take it like you said to you know game day again meaning you know turf and outdoor that kind of stuff is just I mean that would defeat the purpose of it to even make that you know spine tooling shiny coated mm -hmm. to make it shiny you gotta coated. you gotta paint it to get it that way yeah but that's what I'm saying like that would defeat the purpose of what you're telling people to use it for if you're gonna make it all nice and shiny especially the sole. Why would you do that? <laughs> you know? Because that's what they did with the basketball version. Mm. But the basketball version, it worked because it's an indoor ball shoe. Yeah, but they don't know any better, and we're seeing that from this. So it's, yeah, pretty, right. it's, pretty, much, it's pretty much trial and error with, new ba with uh, Under Armour. So no, it's not. It's how far can we go without being really told that we ripped it off completely. No, I, like I said, they, they're taking it from the shoe manufacturer's handbook, the shoe industry, because it's, it's not just certain brands that do this, it's every brand that does this. They take the outsole and use it for a couple of different shoes to cut costs. So, they, it, like, like I, I, I honestly want to give Under Armour a chance, uh, so that's why I say it's trial and error, because I've seen from their inception to where they are now, a yeah. big improvement, and I think that they're trying to head in the right direction, but like I said, it's trial and error. So they have to put something out, see them fall flat on their face, and say, okay, we need to try again. At least yeah, with their the improvements, DB's their five, improvements they are with have, the basics. They have some success. Their improvements are with the basics. Their improvements are not with... It, not with trying to be an authentic athletic brand. Their their improvements are with the basics of sneakers 101, colors, materials, aesthetics, keeping up to date. They, they're they getting better at that. Yes, correct. But they are not coming with any kind of athletically driven innovation. The game day trainer, the other one, is exa it's, 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 uh, it's Barry Sanders' shoe from fucking from the 90s. Did they really think they were getting anybody with that shoe? It's the same thing. But to that point, they're also trying to compete on that level with Nike. Not to say that that's what they should be doing. Not to say that they're doing it relatively well. They're just trying to compete on that level. It's almost like little brother looking up to big brother wanting to borrow big brother's clothes. Now here's, so, a, here's a good shoe. You was telling me that shoe sucked when we talked about it last time. Now it's a good shoe. I like this color. This <laughs> oh, you I don't even like. Color. I don't even like the Detroit Tigers. This shit is awesome. So we're talking about the CJ81 Trainer Max Detroit Tigers version. This shoe is sex on your feet. I like that Nike's taking the um the stand to get behind Calvin Johnson. They gave him the like the logo which you just went down to. Um when they're opening up their uh what is it, the champs field house or the champs um the football catered champs, they're always releasing a Calvin Johnson like P E and I'm using P E as player edition, not player exclusive, because if it was exclusive they wouldn't be selling it. But I like what they've done I like what they've done with his sneaker. I personally like it. It's reminiscent to like Hirachi Trainers to me, which is my favorite shoe ever. The story makes no damn sense, but it's a nice shoe. <laughs> is there a story behind it? I mean, there's a story behind everything, but I mean, it's a Detroit Tiger shoe. He plays football. He don't play baseball. Yeah, but it's Detroit. So, don't have to. He doesn't have to be the same sport. That's like saying you can't rock a pair of DA on Sanders and you don't play. And you don't play baseball or football, doesn't that? You know, that's that's sneaker rules number one, dog. Come on, that don't matter. It kind of does. Hot shoe, it's, a, it's a hot shoe. It's a hot shoe, and you got to run with it. But where's the Detroit Lions version? That's the one that he's gonna be wearing. You're gonna see tons of the Detroit Lions versions. You're not gonna put that on now. He's gonna have that on his foot. 
But why not give us that camp right now? But, but why not give us that first? Why are you giving us one for a baseball team? He's a football player. Because you got to you're because building some, you're building season. you're it's building baseball. other hype around the shoe. That's, you got to test mean, the waters. Basics. Come on, dude. It's baseball season and it's a cross trainer. Summer is cross training time. We're in baseball season. Once uh, football gets out of preseason, you'll start to see more colorways. I guarantee it. I hope you're right. And they yeah. already have their sell through done because they did this. <laughs> yeah. Because this is the best thing I've seen from the Detroit Tigers. This is the best thing you've seen for Detroit, period. <laughs> okay, I'm not, I'm not going that far. I'm not going that far. Hey, I, I said it. I'm not going that far. <laughs> Dude, I'm going to move to Detroit and buy five houses, $800 a piece. <laughs> it's so bad. But I'm going to buy the whole damn block. <laughs> I'm buying the whole block up. Yeah, but this shoe is is ridiculously sexy, though. I got to give it to him. I really like this. Well, a you whole, like lot, a so whole lot better than what they do with the Zoom Revis. Why do you like it so much? I don't know. They just blocked it right. It just and, and and I'm a Transformer fan, so I really like his Megatron logo too. I like what they did for him. They really hooked him up, especially since they couldn't just go straight to Hasbro and get the Megatron logo. This is pretty good for having them MSU some shit. Hmm. So yeah, and the price point is dope. One hundred and twenty dollars. Today's day and age, and the shoe looks better than most shoes that are hundred and sixty dollars and up. Well, to your point, babe, you have to think about it in comparison to today's prices. You're not getting much of a shoe then for hundred and twenty dollars. I mean, you're getting enough of what you. If you were to actually train in the shoe, you're actually getting some a pretty good shoe here if you look at it. Do you want pretty good for hundred and twenty dollars, or do you want really good? In, in today's economy, for hundred twenty dollars, you're only gonna get pretty good. That's why I don't buy shit. <laughs> <laughs> you are they so cynical. Keep, I'm just saying, I, they could keep that. Like I said, it's a lot of stuff that I, that's coming out that I'm not going to spend my money on because they are raping you. Two hundred dollars for that LeBron raping you. Hundred twenty dollars for this shoe raping you. You're not getting what you're paying for. Agreed. But in today's economy, you don't have a choice. I fuck today's economy. I buy what I want when I want, and I don't want any of this stuff because it's too damn expensive, and you're not getting what you you're paying for. Hmm. So, I'm gonna tell you for two hundred for two hundred dollars. I get player samples. So maybe it's because I got big ass feet or maybe because I know the right people. But two hundred dollars for a GMO I think it's shoe? a little bit of both quav. <laughs> two hundred dollars for a GR shoe, you could kiss my ass. It's not happening. Well, I agree with you, but I'm just saying, in today's economy, hundred twenty dollars compared to the shit they're throwing at you, even though we don't pay that. And we know that this shoe, potentially, if it was out there enough, would go on sale and it'd probably be like 80 in no time. Oh, yeah. When well, with, the multi with the multitude of colorways that they're going to release with this shoe, you'll be able to find certain colorways on sale, guaranteed. Yeah, I mean, the Zoom Revis is some places right now for $59.99. There you go. So we knew, we, we've been down this road before. This ain't our first rodeo with that. But I'm just saying, and I'm really saying as a base. I'm not saying mm -hmm. as something I'm willing to pay retail for the day it comes out. As yeah. a base, and considering where it's going to drop when no one picks it up, I'm okay with $120. Mm -hmm. I, I can totally understand that, but even just looking at that base and that price point for what I'm getting as a shoe, yeah, they may throw some 3M on there. It's a, a Air Max bubble or whatnot, but $120 for that? Man. Fifty nine ninety nine. See? Yeah, exactly. Now there's there are tons, now Jesse, there are tons of colorways of the Zoom Revis here in Brooklyn, blocks away from me, for sixty dollars right now. They are actually they had one on sneaker steel earlier for thirty nine ninety nine. Look at that. In the heat, in the building, ATL stand up. 
it's a comfortable shoe. I ain't going front. That's why I picked it up. I didn't really like it, but then he got traded. I was like, word. And then this colorway suits me. And then I put it on. I was like, that's a, that's a done deal. It's a nice shoe. Is as has has our homeboy Mr. Brandon King worked out his audio situation? Is he talking today? <laughs> <laughs> I think I have. Can you hear me? Yeah, we hear you. Finally, it only took two weeks. We're glad you're here. Express your <laughs> thoughts. Welcome. Hey, what's going on, y'all? Um, yeah, this shoe is not worth one hundred and twenty dollars. Thank you. I will wait until it it hits the the Nike clearance stores for forty nine dollars, and then I talk to somebody and get the thirty off on friends and family. See, <laughs> the man who knows the system right there, my friend. <laughs> well, but we all know the system. But what I'm saying is, all right, so let's be real. Let's let's keep it one hundred for the for the viewers. Okay. The one hundred twenty dollars suggested retail price is never going to be what we're going to pay. Oh, no. anybody here? Agree, right? <laughs> Agreed, right? Agreed. Yeah. Okay. So all I'm saying is, as a starting point to how it's really going to go down before it ends up in our closet, $120 isn't bad. For the yeah, average consumer, $120 isn't bad. Um, I think if they would have, if they would have been a little bit more aggressive and put it down to about 100, I think they'd fly. Yeah, but see, this is not this is not an Air Max 95. This is not an Air Max 2013. And those are 140, 150, 160, but back in the day when they came out, and there was 120 or so. You know what I mean? Like, even back then when we, when we weren't OSD special people, I'm not putting $120 down on this. Yeah, but we, you know, I think what Paper's trying to say is in, in today's climate, with the young people that are used to spending a certain amount of money, uh, they've come up in in this you know in this sneaker uh, culture in the last five to ten years. I think we all know it's never going to go back to how it was, but you know back what we knew. You know what I'm saying? Where you could get a pair of Jordans for a hundred bucks with good quality and all that. It's Not never going back to that. But yeah. my, I, I think I think what Paper's getting at is in today's climate, taking all the different factors into into consideration, 120 is pretty reasonable along uh, uh, for for a signature shoe such as you know for an elite athlete like Calvin Johnson. Thank you, Anita no. Heat. No, not when. Not when the store is buying it for about seventy or maybe sixty. And we're not. We're not, not talking about us. We're not talking. Once again, Jeffy, we're not talking, not talking about us. I didn't say us. I'm going <laughs> to what Quab was talking about, and Quab was talking about value for your money. You're yes. not getting the value out of hundred and twenty dollars. Well, it's not that's, there. But we're, so you don't we're buy. We're spoiled. We're we're spoiled, no, Jesse. No, no, no. I'm speaking. I'm, I'm about us. I'm saying what Quab said. You are not getting the value. $120, you should get a full leather shoe. You should be getting premium materials. You're not getting that. And if you're getting basic synthetics, you should not be paying more than $100, maybe less. Period. But are you, I are agree you to a certain extent. But are you going to be I willing guess. to do that in this economy if you're a Calvin Johnson fan? Well, you know what? Well, well, here's a really, better question. Yeah, if you're here's a Calvin a Johnson question. fan and you want that shoe, yeah, you're going to drop 120 on it. That's all here's, I'm saying. Because uh, that's here's all I'm a saying. better question. Here's that's a better question, saying. Jesse. Jesse, here's a better question. What shoe would you recommend for a trainer, as a trainer, with an upper, you know, uh, that was pretty light, comfortable, that you could actually go out and train in for $120 versus this? What would you recommend to somebody? I would recommend an, uh, the free trainer 5.0 that just came out, which is 85 to $90, maybe 95 yeah. I was going to say there's no $120 shoe to recommend. There is no $120 shoe that you actually go out and train in okay, wait, because it wait. doesn't make sense. But here's, here's what we're forgetting. Here's what we're forgetting here in this argument because we're removing a critical part of the ingredients for why the shoe is $120. It's for Calvin Johnson. He's the best wide receiver in the NFL. You don't think Nike's going to get people to take advantage of that fact and want to wear his shoe? No. 
I mean, I, I think they bump it up. I think they bump the price up at least twenty to thirty dollars simply because it's a signature shoe. Exactly. I mean, that, that's the reason why. That's the reason why Kevin Durant shoe has gone up because Nike can't stand the fact that I'm giving you a signature shoe under a hundred dollars. That that that's not the reason it went up, but that's that's the point that I was going to bring up with the fact that you have Kevin Durant as a marquee player on Nike and his shoes on the lower scale, lower price point scale, and they still do phenomenally well because people can relate to the Kevin Durant story and why his shoes are that price. In this case, maybe it's the fact that it's an introductory sneaker, an introductory line with Nike for this player that warrants the price point. But is his fan base big enough to sell out as many colorways that they have planned for this shoe at $120 because to your point, Pate, like you said, these shoes will end up on sale racks for however much, just like the Zoom Revis. They it put will. out 50 million colorways of that shoe, and right now you can get them as low as $39.99, like he said. For so this, is that... Go ahead. For this shoe to be Calvin Johnson's first signature shoe and him being the premier wide receiver in the NFL. There is no wide receiver as good as Calvin Johnson in the NFL, and he's on Nike. For this shoe to come out at a starting price of $120, regardless of what you think it's worth, this is a decent price. I'm sorry, it is. There's no better wide receiver in the NFL than this guy, and he's on Nike. Why wouldn't Nike charge $120? It's a decent price because it's a signature model that's honoring the city of Detroit by having your best wide receiver who plays football in the baseball color so it can be worn right now. That warrants the extra $40 to make it $120. But that's it. That's the only reason. And, and isn't that all you need? We're not asking for all the other technical stuff that we're <laughs> That wasn't what we was asking for. Because we know it ain't there. Exactly. I mean, we all know what the game. We all know how the game go, man. For all the factors that we just added in, mentioning rather, knowing that, one hundred twenty dollars is a good base starting point. I'm sticking to my guns on that. I'm not gonna pay one hundred and twenty dollars for this shoe. None of nobody here on camera would pay one hundred twenty dollars for this shoe. But based on all factors concerned that went into making this shoe and who it's for, one hundred twenty dollars is a good starting point. I mean, the way these kids are buying shoes nowadays. I think I think this shoe is gonna sell. To be honest with you, I think I think this shoe is gonna sell simply off the fact that it's the best wide receiver in the league. He has a name for himself, and it's it's a dope shoe. You know what I'm saying? For the most part, it's a nice it's a nice shoe, and it's 120 dollars. I know I know plenty of kids out here that I talk to who they'll grab this because I ain't got I can save my extra forty dollars instead of going to get the new Jordan. I can get this and still be fly. You know what I'm saying? So into football like I, I think a lot of kids are gonna buy this. What do you say, Flower? I'm saying, but are the kids into football like they are into basketball? Because just oh, like definitely, definitely. Nobody's buying the sneakers Nobody's for the sport buying. anymore. It's not he. He's not. Yeah, he may be a great player and all that right now, but he ain't hyped up like LeBron is hyped up. Maybe for oh, LeBron. Oh no, no, LeBron. no. Well, I'm not. I'm not saying that at all. I'm. I think I think first of all, football is the most popular sport in the country with a bullet. So that alone, you know what I'm saying? You get you getting you bringing more people to the to the to the table, a, a couple more people to the table off of that. Uh, you know, with him being the, the the number one wide receiver in the in the league. I mean, like I said, 120 dollars, and then you're gonna get people who just look at it, even who don't even really follow him like that. I think you get people who are just walking to the mall and see this shoe and be like, you know what, that's a dope shoe. How much? One twenty. Okay, the new Jordan is one sixty, about to be one seventy. You know what I'm saying? Or the new LeBron is one eighty. Hell, I can save my little dope, go get me a fitted, you know what I mean, or a snapback. Okay, like now, now that explains it a little bit more because I don't, you know, I don't know about those prices, so I just can't. It'll work for the colorway. It'll work for the city of Detroit. It's not going to sell out in any other region besides Detroit. And then Calvin Johnson is already in market now. Calvin Johnson is Nike's pro training signature athlete. He is in Sports Authority. He is in Dick's. 
he is in field house. He's all over the place. He's now, what you have to re- in foot locker too. So what you have to realize with basketball and football is the helmets and the cleats. They wear helmets when they play, so you can't see their faces, and they wear and they're wearing cleats. Mm-hmm. They don't wear their signature shoes. <coughs> Excuse me. We don't see them in the gym. We don't see them working out unless they got a commercial. So this isn't going to cross over popularity-wise. You're not going to have a kid going to the store and say, Ma, can I get the Calvin Johnson instead of the Jordans? Never going to happen. Not, not going to happen. But if you, you have, have a certain have amount of money in your pocket you. and you're trying to work out the outfit and you get a good salesman, he says, well, I can't get you that, but – Calvin Johnson's got what you're looking for. Then it may I'm not saying they. Go, I'm not saying that this shoe is going to compete with the basketball signature shoe. I think you know that's crazy. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I'm definitely. Don't, I'm not saying that at all. But I think it is going to do okay. I'm not saying it's going to just be flying off the shelves. But I think it's going to do better. I think. I think the biggest problem, with, even with the Revis, I think the biggest problem with the Revis is they 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 overdid it. They brought out too many colorways. You know what I'm saying? Like, I had some people I knew that was looking for the Reavers, and then, you know, because they're not really down here like that, but it's like once they got a couple of pairs, it was like, okay, cool. They were different, and then all of a sudden, they just flooded the market with all these colorways. So, it's like, okay, wait, wait a minute, whoa. So well, here's, here's part of the problem. Two problems. And, and we take it back to the Reavers. The Royal Reavers got hurt for the season before his shoe even came out. And we ain't seen him since. And at the time when his shoe was about to come out, he was already still being called the best corner in the game. Didn't see him. Still haven't seen him since. And there's no connection, like Jesse said, to these athletes when they're on the field. But he had one. You knew who Darrell Rivas was off the court. Because Darrell Reeves used to go out to events. He used to do other stuff outside of just being on the football field where you saw him play. So they had a good ingredient for him to work out if he didn't get hurt. Mm -hmm. Well, that's why he was a Nike sportswear. You didn't see Darrell Reeves in a whole lot of training gear. You saw Darrell Reeves in Nike sportswear because he was the dude that was going to go out. Right. Calvin Johnson, you're going to have that issue because, Mm -hmm. number one, even when you do see him, every now and then, I mean, actually, I believe he did a men's warehouse commercial last year. We mm-hmm. actually yeah. got to see him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But other than that, you don't see him off the field. But one thing he does have going for him, again, is still, he is the best wide receiver in the game. And, and, and every and Sunday, let me say this too. you're going to hear that every Sunday. Let me say this, too. I know I'm, I'm, I am might be a little different. Because he's from here. He's from Atlanta. So I think we see him here a little more because he is from here. Um, and, you know, he has a couple of different ads locally that we see. You know what I'm saying? So he's a little bit more visible here. Like I said, just being that he's from here, he makes appearances down here, stuff like that. But nationally, I think he's – I don't. I, you're right. I think he, he's, his face is not out there like Revis. Well, here's the other problem. And, and this is an undeniable fact. If it's not a retro, cross-training shoes from any brand don't sell. Right. It's hard. Yeah. It's hard. So even Bo Jackson sports, sells, but that's about it. <laughs> that's a retro. That's a retro. Yeah. If it's not a retro cross-trainer, it doesn't sell. New cross-training shoes from any brand, brand new, fresh out the box. This is our new trainer. Go get it. Work your ass off is not selling for anybody. Well, I'm I'm curious. Do you guys think? Uh, you know, I understand we we, we agree 120. You know, well, we don't agree. Some of us think 120 is reasonable. Some don't. What do you think is a reasonable price that will help these shoes move? It's not even about helping the shoes move because this segment right here that we're even talking about is an underperforming segment in the industry. So it doesn't no, matter I'm, what you price it at, no one's going to buy it. No one's going to buy it. I wouldn't go as far to say nobody's going to buy it. It's just not going to sell as other peak seasons. I mean, cross-training has always been kind of a lull because there's not a lot going on so far as very hyped-up sports. Like we were discussing earlier, you don't see football players in their signature shoes. You may see them 
and a modified version for a cleat. And even with baseball players, they have modified cleat versions. So, I mean, with the summer and cross-training, it's always a bit of a lull so far as athletic shoe sales are concerned. And that's why you see a lot of brands pushing out a lot more basketball styles early. Basketball is, is pretty much played all year. If not in the States, then all over the world. Exactly. So cool. like I was saying before, they pushed out that KD crazy early. Summer League is going on right now. So you're going to see basketball shoes throughout the entire year because you can see these guys actually playing in their shoes. Yep. So with these, with these shoes, considering that it's during a time where there's a lull for cross-training, I mean, the price point of 120, it, it like we said, it's not something necessarily we all would pay. General consumer might be like, yeah, all right, that's a good price point. It's cheaper than this other crap that's out. Let me pick up a pair of those. This dude is doing some amazing stuff on the field, whatever, whatever. But uh, for me, if I were looking to move a lot of these units because I know that they're going to put out let's say six to eight different colorways, I probably would have put it at $100 MSRP just to, to get it out the door. And those shoes would be on a ton of people's feet. I totally they're, they're, agree. Moving, they're moving backwards with this shoe. They're moving backwards because they don't do shoes like these with the boutiques. So, so this, is, this right here is an energy release. They are trying to drum up <laughs> energy around this shoe because the first three colorways, which we know released in July have yep. not sold at all. So they're like, okay, what are we going to do? We need to get some attention on this guy. The marketing campaign doesn't come out until August. What do we do? So they're like, okay, let's turn it over to the energy people and see if they can come up with something cool because it ain't moving. Yep. So it's backwards. Whereas with boutiques and other shoes, you get an energy color first, a la Reebok. You put that out to the boutiques and certain influencers so that people start getting an idea of what the model looks like. They don't do that with these shoes, and they haven't done that with his shoe. Therefore, it ain't going to move. But they did that with Darrell Revis because you saw the Darrell Revis on a whole bunch of social people and things of that yeah. nature before you saw yeah. it actually on the field and realized it was a football shoe. I was yeah, about to go, even the first two colorways, I, don't even, I haven't seen them at all down here. I don't even know where they hit. I don't even know where to get them. I think you can only get them at Champs Fieldhouse, and that's, that store is only in certain certain places. It ain't everywhere, so. Mm -hmm. yep. They're not getting the sell through they want, so they got to come up with something. But see, let, to your point, Jesse, with these other brands and the energy releases, those SMUs, the special makeups, they know that they're not going to make a larger profit margin on those shoes. But they know once they release the base version or other colorways of that same shoe, that they'll have a better sell through. Being that this is the first time out with Calvin Johnson, I think they're playing it safe. They played it too safe. And like you said, they're moving backwards trying to, to get back in the game with this shoe because they put the money into the campaign as well as the, the player's endorsement contract. So, Yep. All right. So stay tuned. Well, anyone who listens to the show, watches the show, gets a pair of these for a ridiculous price that quote-unquote qualifies as a come-up, <laughs> please hit us up and let us know. All right. Yeah, because yeah, I like that one, man. <laughs> Last shoe of the night. The black label. Puma mm. Vihara Yasuhiro Tattoo Collection. Puma Say black again. Mihara Yasuhiro. <laughs> Okay. Hmm. This is called from the tattoo collection. I don't like tattoos, but I like these shoes. Really? Really? First I of do. all... What did you say, <laughs> Flower? I'm going to hit you with a tattoo for that statement. I don't even see the influence of tattoo. It looks like a pagoda. Mm. Yeah, it does. It looks close. Like these people are just like picking up picking names out of the air sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think I think in this case, to uh, kind of I, I want to say be more PC because 
I think the influences on the shoe look more Samoan than anything else. They can't call it a right. Samoan shoe because you alienate yeah. so many other people. Yes. Yeah. Get a tattoo. Everybody got tattoos now, so I mean it, it'll be more widely received. Yep, I saw I saw that too, Quab. Yep. Uh, I think that's where the name comes from because looking at it, it for me, I, I see Samoan influence. So rather than alienate people who have no idea what the hell a Samoan is, call it a tattoo. And as an Asian guy with Samoan influence, I don't know. Call it a tattoo. I'm confused. <laughs> I like the low. I don't like the high. Oh. Mm -mm. This shit's an ugly period. That is just awful. It's Puma. <laughs> you throwing daggers all night. No, but I mean, Puma's I'm just keeping going. it real. It's Puma. I mean, you know, can't, you know. Some of Puma's stuff is all right, though. At least, at least he's consistent. <laughs> Walk like a duck, talk like a duck, must be a duck. You know what I'm saying? Like that hey, uh, would be fine. One thing, about, one thing about Jesse, he, he back on hold no punches and he going to be consistent. <laughs> That's correct. Uh, I like Puma Black Label stuff. Most of it. I'd say a good 80% of Puma Black Label is pretty cool. Yeah, but in that case, why not do it as a wider release? You know, with these specialty label, purple, yellow, blue, whatever label, it's always going to be limited and at a higher price point. If they're, I, I know it's based on on profitability and the back end and everything else, and but with a lot of these specialty labels and lines that they these companies have. If they did a wider release, it would be better for them in the long run. They may not be able to get as many boutiques or doors to, to buy at the wholesale price because it's probably going to be expensive as hell. But, yep. I mean, it would, it would be a, a, a better kind of marketing tool for the brand. I mean, to walk into select, let's say, Foot Lockers and see that low top, I mean, people would be like, yo, that's really cool, but you got to go to a boutique that's a hole in the wall where you got to have a password to get in and then get past the bouncer and all this other stuff to buy the shoe. Mom and pop ain't going to go in there and buy Junior those shoes if you got to go through all of that. Well, well, that's where, you know, that's where we're at the point right now with our culture, with shoe culture, because that's where, you know, that T-shirt, the game fucked up, and this is where the game is fucked up because you have these – multi-million dollar companies that think if I do a collaboration with this this, in, this influencer, if I start this black label and I put it only in a certain store, this store will tell the story. And if they tell the story properly, then this kid or whoever will run back to their latest Foot Locker and pick up the model. And that's not happening because boutiques mm -hmm. are not selling stories anymore. Boutiques are just, can I, get, can I be the next reseller? The story is gone, which is what we talk about. And that's why the whole energy thing is failing. These private lines are failing because no one's telling the story. The story is supposed to get you to understand what's going on with the shoe company, and, and it's not happening. Well, here's an interesting thing that Quab... Just like everybody else. Huh? Here's, a, here's an interesting thing that Quab made a suggestion of that I don't know if anybody knows. Um, but Foot Locker... Now has a black label account for Puma. Yeah, how many how many stores does that include though? But I'm just saying they're starting to listen to what you just suggested because yeah. Puma has a black label account. That's uh, unprecedented no. for them because the price point for a black label starts at 150, 160, 175 dollars for some of these shoes. Yeah, now, but then I in order to get those shoes, you're gonna have to be a VIP Foot Locker spender. In order to get into the vault, in order to get to Puma Black Label. No, no, that's well, not true. They're on the shelf. No, not necessarily. It's just going to be in a Foot Locker that probably does maybe 1.5 to 2 million a year, and they have they have a good majority of those stores that do that. Like for instance, uh, Dade Land Mall in Miami, which also has a House of Hoops as well is a very large volume store that I can see these shoes in. Uh, Aventura Mall in South Florida is another high volume, very well-to-do area, which I can see these shoes in. So they, they do have stores 
that would be able to carry this stuff and probably move through it. But it, it's it's it, it just it's about time. That's it. So it, it's just more about knowing how to get your product into the consumer's hands where they're going to be willing to pay that higher price point. Yeah, so they're starting to listen to you, Quab. They're starting to do it. Because I, I was surprised when I saw it the other day that there's a bunch of McQueen and and other stuff. Even And, and, and if I remember correctly, I can't remember which Foot Locker I was in right now, but I'm even starting to see Y3 pop up in Foot Locker. That, I mean, with with those kind of like black label and Y three, they at least with Y three, I can speak on that. They they are more established. I know when Y three initially was introduced, it was only pretty much done through Y three stores and maybe select Adidas stores, because one, those shoes looked hella weird, and two, the price point was crazy. So I, I think up. that they've kind of found a medium place between price point and the weird looking shoes where it can be accepted as more commonplace because I mean you see a lot of like that Raf Simmons stuff and all the mm -hmm. other extra stuff yep. that people yep. are into now is like old Y three shit. Mm -hmm. So it, it's it's becoming more commonplace where you have a certain subset of consumers that are willing to pay that two hundred dollar plus price point to look different from everybody else and these companies are starting to kind of wake up to that some of them have already been on it and some of them have just started to get on it but I think overall it's starting to kind of diversify the marketplace in a good and in a bad way because not everybody needs to be buying Two and three hundred dollar Raph Simmons shoes just to look like a, a, a skinny crackhead who's high on fashion. <laughs> <laughs> I'm buying Jesse a pair of Pumas for his birthday. Come on, man! You know I got some in my closet. I'm just saying that you know I'm not wearing those. <laughs> <laughs> well, Pete, you've been quiet. I, so. I, I... I'm not. I'm not feeling. I'm not feeling any of these. Uh, this Mihara stuff. I'm not. I'm not. Can't get into it. But there is a lane. There is a person. There is a consumer for it. But that person is not D Wells. So it's okay. Just give me some old old Puma Clydes with some fat laces. I. Or, or I do like I do like and shout out to Puma. I, I did enjoy I do enjoy I've worn them twice now. BioWeb Elite. The, the BioWeb Elite LTDs. They are super comfortable. What super what size? You got a fourteen? Fourteen, correct. Because they don't go to fifteen, right? Um, can't say that. I haven't seen them. No, I don't know. I wanted that Listen. shoe, but I haven't said I've, I've been looking for that shoe. But the biggest I've seen is a fourteen. It's a fourteen, and they do. And I, I do notice in the you know they're comfortable, but you have to, you know, for me, it's wearing them with the laces very loose to begin with. I mean, they're tied, but loose. Stretch them a right. little bit, and then they're good. Because again, I have a very wide, I have a triple E width, width foot. Oh, uh. so. I, I heard great things. Everybody I know that has a pair loves them. So mm. yeah, well, ridiculous has it. He's had a pair for a couple of months. He oh, was the wow. first one to share his thoughts on them when he got them. Um, he likes them a lot. Um, yeah, I like them too. You know me. If it's performance, I'm on it. So I'll let you know when I get a pair on. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Hey, hey Jesse, um, throw that throw that website URL out for uh, people to get your uh, performance reviews and and whatnot, sir, for our viewers. Oh, I've been slacking a little bit on my reviews. That's okay. Give so me a chance to catch up. With it. But you know, anytime you want to see how I'm feeling about shoes or reviews or whatever thing, you know, I'm doing my thing on BOS to PDX dot com, trying to do my own photography and shoes. So I tell you about it, uh, and I'm also um, writing for a small blog out of Baltimore called uh, the Urban Athletica, TUA, trying to do some fitness slash fashion sneaker wear too. So anytime you want to check up on my writing, you can go there. Awesome. Cool. 
So D Wells. Yes, sir. OSD crew, disorderlies as we are called. It is twelve thirty nine AM Eastern yes, Time. Nine forty Pacific time. Wow. Nine forty Pacific time. He chooses to rub it in. Damn, y'all don't still go out and party, huh? That's what's up. <laughs> but but I, I have to thank the crew for, for you know, we were gone for a month with doing what we were doing with um you know, building the brand, if you will. And uh, we came back in, in grand style and gave people the classic OSD stylings that we do. We gave them the the the, the B and D. We gave them the business and debauchery tonight. <laughs> shout out to uh, Mr. Brandon King. We hope you're still rehabbing well, brother. And shout out to our little brother who's always in the corner, Ben Berry. I don't know where the hell he is now. He might be in the corner. <laughs> 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 but we'll definitely be back next week, episode number 271. That is correct. That is not a made-up number. 271 episodes deep. We are fast approaching our anniversary, too, gang. Six years coming up in a couple of weeks. So, True. we ain't got to go home, but we got to get the hell out of here. So, D-Wells, please. Man. It's been good. It's been fun. Hopefully you walk with us, talk with us, and more importantly, learn from us. Make sure you keep in tune, keep in step with us. Hit us up with information. You want to hear us discuss a topic on OSD. The Soul Doctors are here for you. Hit us up at info at osdlive.com. That is info at osdlive.com. Until next week, keep your laces tight, tightly, your tongue loose, and walk good. Y'all be safe. Until the next time, we're up, up, and out. Yeah. Yeah. And the screams from everywhere. Yeah. I'm addicted to the thrill. It's a dangerous Try. love affair. Can't be scared when it goes down. Got a problem, tell me now. Only thing that's on my mind is to go on this town tonight.